Fishing Athletics website. Welcome to Baysmore Hyder Stadium at Cleveland Field, home of the Valdosta State Blazers, where the intrastate battle against West Georgia begins today, the battle for the Peach Basket. Alongside Neil Folger, I'm Bryce Zimmerman, and the GSC pretty tight at the top. It is pretty tight, Bryce, as we take a look here at the GSC standings. The University of Central Arkansas has already guaranteed themselves at least a share of the conference title with a win over arch rival Arkansas Tech on Thursday night. What this means for the Blazers, Blazers is that with a win today over West Georgia, the Blazers will win the Gulf South Conference or at least get a share of the GSC for the fifth time in six years. It will also mean the Blazers will lock up the number one seed in the South region and will receive a bye week as the Division II National Playoffs start next week. Bryce? None of that could have been possible, however, without a win last week in Magnolia, Arkansas. D.D. Holyfield getting it started well for the Mule Riders. First play from scrimmage, 80 yards, cuts up field on the option play, rumbles into the end zone. An attempt by Sean Harris to strip the ball, but he was already in. 16-0, SAU jumps out, but Barrett Wilkes comes right back. Five-yard scamper into the end zone. Then Tucker Pruitt into the game, finds Sherrard Reynolds from 47 yards out. Wide open touchdown. A field goal by Southern Arkansas would have a 12-point lead and Coach Hatcher's team down at the half. The Blazers came out, though, looking for offense, and they found it. Wilkes complete into double coverage to Sherrard Reynolds, which set up one of Vincent Brown's touchdown runs. This one from one yard out. And then William Milton found here by Barrett Wilkes out of the flat. This would set up the second consecutive Vincent Brown touchdown as he runs in from five yards here. And what about a natural hat trick? Watch the spin move, Vincent Brown into the end zone, three straight touchdowns from Vincent. Then Wilkes, the pump fake. Blazers on top at this point. Find Sherrard Reynolds, a big strike. Puts the Blazers up big. SAU mounting to come back, but this catch, Sherrard Reynolds unable to get in the end zone, but it sets up a Michael Green field goal, which would prove to be the difference. 44-41, Valdosta State comes back and beats Southern Arkansas. And now let's go to today's starting lineups for the Blazers on offense, starting at X receiver, number 15, Clay Calloway at H receiver a 5'11 sophomore number 28 Travis Taylor the offensive line starting at left tackle number 56 Gerald Davis at left guard a six foot sophomore number 61 C.A. Sanders at center number 63 Calvin Huggins at right guard number 66 a 6'3 freshman Dakaris Leakes at right tackle number 75 big Richard Collier at the wide receiver will be the tight end, number 85, Zach Parker. Leading the hatch attack today will be quarterback Barrett Wilkes. He's wearing number 11. The fullback today will be 5'11", senior, number 25, William Milton. Running today will be number 14, the senior, Vincent Brown. And your Z receiver will be number 10, Sherrard Reynolds. For the Valdosta State Black Swarm defense, defensive end number 42, also a senior, Dedrick Morrison. A senior, four straight seniors on this line. James Hutley, number 57, is a tackle. Nose guard number 99, Calvin English, 6'4", 275. And all everything, Tim Thompson, 6'4", 250, wearing number 91 on the other end for the flame red and black. Getting the start at strong side linebacker is freshman number six, Eric Williams. Middle linebacker is number 52, Michael Cullen. Your weak side linebacker, Donnie Daniels, just a sophomore. And another sophomore joins him in the backfield, cornerback Sean Harris. Junior Bernard George gets the nod on the other side of the cornerback spot. Your rover is Antoine Harris. And your free safety, team captain and senior, Scott Boss. Four special teams for the Blazers. Doing the place kicking will be senior number 43, Michael Green and doing the punting duties today and doing a very fine job this year, the senior number 41, Travis Tidwell. It's Blazers Braves on VSU TV, the battle for the peach basket. Stay with us for opening kickoff. One breakthrough machine gave us insight into the bones as another did for the heart and another for the brain. Now doctors are using a new machine to practice medicine and save lives. The difference is it's one you can use too. 
when you log on to MedlinePlus.gov from the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, you're tapping into the largest, most comprehensive medical website in the world. MedlinePlus.gov, the website doctors prescribe. For some folks, saving for the future is easy, but for you, it might take a little more effort. Saving for your future is your responsibility, and there's a lot to save for. I never thought of that. Like your child's education, perhaps uncovered medical expenses, or just to be sure you can live the way you want when you retire. The time is now to save for tomorrow. Save now or work forever. The choice is yours. Choose to save. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. I'll find you in the morning sun, and when the night is new, I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you. Welcome back to Bazemore Hyder Stadium, and this is Valdosta State Football on VSU TV, and one of the most important games of the season every season. West Georgia, the Braves, the arch rival of the Blazers, are in town. And since 2001, it's been all about the Peach Basket. Since 2000, Bryce, the Peach Basket is a tradition that began back in 2000 with both Valdosta State and West Georgia's booster clubs. VSU has retained possession of the trophy basket since its inception in 2000. And uh, honestly, Bryce, this is the type of game like a Florida, Florida State, or a Georgia, Georgia Tech, VSU could be one in, could be 0 and 10 entering today's game, and if they won against West Georgia, it would be a complete season. That's how much these two teams hate each other. However, the Blazers are nine and one, and West Georgia six and four. We're about set for kickoff. Blazers will be receiving Sherrard Reynolds back deep, all on his own. Kicking off is Adi Berkic for the West Georgia Braves, and they'll go on defense first, and they have some gaudy numbers on defense, we'll tell you about. But here's the kick, and we're underway. The annual rivalry, Valdosta State and West Georgia. With some room, Sherrard Reynolds to the 26th before he's taken down, and here comes the gaunted West Georgia defense, a defense in total it is 19th best in the nation, second in the GSC in terms of total yards and their rushing defense is outstanding, averaging, allowing only 86.3 yards and seventh in the nation. Blazers, big keys to this one. One of them's gotta be to run the ball. Oh, without a doubt, one of the things is to have balance on the teams. As we see here, a penalty on West Georgia on the kickoff. All BC sides. Has elected to have them re-kick, but as we were talking about, Bryce, the hatch attack has got to capitalize because West Georgia is the type of team that if you allow them to get into rhythm, if you allow them to get into sync, they will dominate you up front. Um, Vincent brings a whole new dimension to the hatch attack now that he's close to 100%. They need to do a good job of surprising the run-stuffing West Georgia defense by having a little bit of screen plays here and always to keep number 14 a part of the running and passing game as we get set for the second kickoff here. So here's the re-kick. Berkic getting set once again. Reynolds back deep. This one five yards back now spotted on the 30-yard line. 14-54 just underway in the second kickoff of the first half. Reynolds looking for blockers. He's got a seam up to the 30, taken down at the 31 by Larico Stevenson, a junior from Olive Branch, Missouri. The two guys on this defense that have just been stellar the entire year have been linebackers John Perkins and Kelvin Morris, each with 71 total tackles on the season, 49 unassisted by Perkins and 51 Kelvin Morris. Kelvin Morris, a transfer from Clemson, six and a half sacks on the season. They'll run a bandit, they'll run a rover. This team has a deadly defense. Barrett Wilkes. In the shotgun for the Blazers, play clock at 10. He's got a lot of time. Vincent Brown in the backfield. Flamed red and black, their first possession. The handoff is to Vincent Brown. He gets up to the 37. Gain of four. It'll be second and six. 
This, this Braves defense also does a phenomenal job of pressuring the quarterback. They rank first in the nation with 33 sacks. Not first in the nation, first in the conference with 33 sacks. And three players rank in the top five in the league with in sacks, with Kelvin Morris having six and a half, Brandon Jamison having six and a half, and Odell Willis having six sacks. So the Blazer O-line has their hands full today. Play action, whistle dead. Could be a false start on Valdosta State. It was a screen pass intended for Derek Tharp, but VSU will move back five yards, and it'll be second down and 11, an early penalty. Valdosta State last week against Southern Arkansas, 12 penalty or 11 penalties, total 24 penalties in the game combined both teams. It was a very ugly game in Magnolia. VSU is going to have to try to avoid mistakes like that. Already two penalties, one on each side to start this one. Coach, Coach Chris Hatcher has always said that the more penalized team usually wins ball games, and it almost came back to bite him in the rear last week. But uh, Blazers find themselves with a second and 10 from their own 36-yard line just underway here in the first quarter. Wilkes with Milton to his right and Brown to his left. Set the throw, good coverage. Finds a man in the middle of the zone, it's Sherrard Reynolds. Get used to that, he gets to the 47, enough for the first down. Reynolds, an unbelievable game last week. Six receptions, 194 yards, two touchdowns. He was outstanding. The last six weeks he's been unbelievable, and here he is again. Great pocket awareness, awareness there by Barrett Wilkes. Good job of protecting the quarterback by Richard Collier there, fighting off the brave defensive lineman and Barrett Wilkes was able to deliver a pass to now his main man, Sherrard Reynolds. No huddle, handoff, counter play by Vincent Brown, keeps the legs moving, gets up to the 49, gain of two, second down and eight, 13-22 and counting here in the first quarter. Bryce, you were talking about how Sherrard Reynolds has gotten off to such a great start in this only his first season as a Blazer. He has quickly surpassed both Dedrick Smith and Derek Tharp as the go-to receiver on this Blazer offense, as you see here, three receivers to the near side and Sherrard Reynolds to the far side. Once again, a no huddle from Coach Hatcher in the air raid attack. West Georgia showing blitz, they back off. Just a three-man pressure, Wilkes finding Reynolds and tried to sneak one through the zone. Reynolds jumped up just off the fingertips, but zone coverage so far from the Braves. Not what, I, not what we had expected coming into to today's game. West Georgia likes to run that middle linebacker, one of their linebackers close to the defensive line, as we talked about before the game. But uh, as long as the Blazers find themselves facing nickel and dime coverage, Barrett Wilkes is going to have little trouble finding the open pockets to throw the ball into. As spectacular as their run defense is, they are susceptible through the air, if anywhere, the West Georgia defense. Wilkes, blitz coming, over the middle, wide open, Derek Tharpe nearly trips, now goes down across the 35 yard line to the 34, first down, Valdosta State, they move the chains again. Breon Ford, the cornerback for West Georgia, covering Derek Tharpe, fell down on the play, that's why Barrett Wilkes found Derek Tharpe wide open, but once again, West Georgia trying to put pressure on Barrett Wilkes, just great job of our offensive line stepping in getting their assignments and not letting the West Georgia defense into the backfield. VSU in West Georgia territory. Play action again, screen pass out. Sherrard Reynolds looking for a hole. Gets it down to the 26 yard line. Decent gain on the play. Valdosta State continuing to move forward on this opening drive through the air. They're not trying to test this West Georgia running attack because they know how extremely good it is. So look for Barrett Wilkes and the Blazers to keep on nickeling and diming their way with short passes for five to seven yards at a time. Second down and two, Reynolds to the far side, near side slot, Zach Parker the sophomore, and Clay Calloway also a sophomore. Wilkes set the throw, brought down flag. It's gonna be a holding call, there's a fumble, and the ball is still loose. It looked like it could have been the arm could have been going forward. West Georgia has recovered the fumble. The flag looks like it's going to be a holding call. They'll decline that, and West Georgia takes over on the sack by Odell Willis. Odell Willis already with six sacks on the year, and that just proves the point of how extremely dominant 
this West Georgia defense can be. And hopefully the Blazer, all, hopefully the Blazer defense now will step up and stop West Georgia where other teams have failed. And that is not allowing this West Georgia offense to sh shove the ball right through, right down their opponent's throats. Interesting move here. Starting quarterback all year long has been Keats Baldwin, but Brett Ginser, a freshman from Marietta, now behind center eye formation. Remember, leading rusher for West Georgia, Abe Felix is not playing. He's out for the rest of the season. In the backfield is Javari Taylor, and that's who they give it to. He tries to counter back to the inside, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, might have gotten a yard. Not much there for Javari Taylor on the counter. It'll be second down and nine, 11, 14, and counting away here in the first quarter. Valdosta State fumbled on its first possession of the game. A sack by Odell Willis forced Barrett Wilkes to drop the ball. Once again in the I formation, three receivers set for West Georgia. Jabriel Holbrook, their leading receiver in the slot. Set to throw, Yenser nearly slips, now throws one deep, Bernard George on coverage, and it is complete. Down at the one, not a touchdown, but the pass caught by Bo Whitmire, a freshman from Gainesville, Georgia, and in Massive game by the Braves, and they're on the VSU one quickly. Antoine Harris bit on the play action fake there, Bryce. West Georgia runs the play action better than any team in the Gulf South Conference because of their ability to run the ball. It was just a miscoverage by Antoine Harris, allowing Bo Whitmire to just break through and get the huge game, which brings up a first and goal for West Georgia at the Blazers' one-yard line. Two in the backfield, one Brian Davis right behind center, and then Javari Taylor, handoff is the Taylor. He is not going to be marked in the end zone. He'll be short. It'll be second and goal inside the one. So West Georgia, known for their vaunted running attack, comes out and throws a deep ball with new freshman quarterback Brett Genser. VSU trying to hold West Georgia at the one-inch line. Just under 10 minutes, first quarter. West Georgia trying to play spoiler to the number one team in the South region, number two in the nation, Valdosta State. Hand off to the fullback, Brian Davis. He trudges into the end zone, touchdown, and West Georgia strikes first, taking advantage of the Barrett-Wilkes fumble. Six-nothing Braves. This team definitely is one that's not going to be an easy victory for the Blazers at all. Just capitalizing on missed opportunities and Barrett Wolves fumbling it away and West Georgia says, we'll take that and we'll score. And that's what they did. Adi Burkick's extra point is through and West Georgia strikes first in the Peach Basket rivalry. It's seven nothing Braves here in Valdosta. So not a good start for Valdosta State. It looked like offensively they were moving the ball with ease. And then all of a sudden the fumble happens. A huge play by West Georgia. Momentum swinging all the way in West Georgia's favor right now. Without a doubt, the Blazers need to come out better. The Blazers executed very efficiently until they got to where they fumbled the ball about the 35-yard line. They just need to keep that ball, not let it go, and if you commit turnovers, especially in a rivalry as hated as this, I mean, the other team is going to be very quick to pounce on it and make you pay for it. Don't forget to listen to WVVS 90.9 FM every Thursday from 8 to 10 for the X's and O's show. Zim, AMAC, Monty, and Big Red bring Valdosta its only Rock Talk Sports radio program. Call 3335661 to get your hot sports opinion in. You can do it. The number 3335661 every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m. on 90.9 Blaze FM. Bryce, I'm proud of you. You remembered to mention a, for, uh, a forenamed Big Red without him having to remind you about it. Very good job. This is very true. And a lot of that show is spent talking about Valdosta State Athletics. And this was a hot topic, the West Georgia Valdosta State game. 
It's a sultry November day. It Ooh. is hot out here. Who would have thought that? In November? In Valdosta, I say you, you can't rule it out. That's true. It's not like in Carrollton where it is iffy all the time. Nice crowd settling in. Burkich third kick of the day. Only the second one that matters. Sherrard Reynolds looking for blocks. Sidesteps one, gets out to the 21-yard line before he's taken down by the Braves special teams unit. And Valdosta State once again will take over deep in their own territory. Another key to the Blazers' victory today, Bryce, is going to be the protection of Barrett Wilkes. As we mentioned before, this West Georgia defense leads the Gulf South Conference with 33 sacks allowed. They're fierce, they're fast, and they're frightening. And their biggest threat is that front seven. Barrett must be given time or he'll be scrambling all day long. And for the Blazers, Barrett scrambling usually means costly mistakes. Wilkes, spread formation. Play action, now being pressured. Throws it over the middle, the pass is complete to Zach Parker. A wobbly throw, but Parker came back to the ball to be enough for the first down. And Valdosta State gets out to the 34 yard line on the completion. Same thing they did in their previous drive, Bryce. Looking for the open receivers in the nickel coverage. Hopefully this time the Blazers can manage to kick it through the uprights or push it through the end zone. Nine minutes, 15 seconds, seven nothing. West Georgia on top early. Travis Taylor in motion for the home team. Hand off to Vincent Brown. Jukes up one. Vincent Brown's got room to run. Cross the 50 to the 40. Inside the 45, Vincent Brown cut right back up. The hole on the right side and a huge gain for the running attack of Valdosta State. It looked like to me that that was a counter play that, Bear, that, not Bear, that Vincent went to the left and then saw the huge opening to the near side of the field. And with that opening and with Vincent Brown's speed, he just took it right on through. And you're looking at a big 30 yard run by Vincent Brown, which sets up a first and 10 for Valdosta State at the West Georgia 32 yard line. Just under nine minutes, Callaway, Taylor, and Zach Parker to the near side. To the far side all alone, Sherrard Reynolds. In the backfield, Willie Milton. Slip, Barrett Wilkes tries to get up, taken down by West Georgia's number 32. Loss on the play for Valdosta State. Maybe four to five yards lost. It'll be second down and 15. Once again, the no huddle for VSU. Eight minutes, 13 seconds in ticking. In the first quarter of play. Three receivers to the far side, Zach Parker to the near. Wilkes steps up, throws, overthrows his man and it's picked off by Adam Carter. Callaway tackled Carter. Barry Wilkes threw it into zone coverage right up the middle. Adam Carter, the rover, just dropped right in front of it to take it away in two straight turnovers on consecutive possessions by Valdosta State. Bry Bryce Barrett was trying to throw into double coverage there, and you're not going to get away with that with playing a quality defense like West Georgia's. And Barrett was under pressure, too. He, he managed to step and deliver a throw, step up in the pocket, but when you're under pressure like that and when you're being forced to throw it earlier than you want to, interceptions are usually the result. And now you're looking at a West Georgia first and 10 from their own six yard line with just under eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Third pick of the year for Adam Carter, 15th for the Braves on the season. Handoff is to Stan Rowe, the backup. Gets out to the 15. Be close to a West Georgia first down. Good job there by the fullback, number 13, not number 13. Good job by the fullback there to pick up the blitz, pick up the linebacker, specifically number 37, Geo Blaylock, opening up the hole for the nine yard gain for Stan Rowe. Second down and one, ball spotted right at the 15, seven minutes and 20 seconds. First quarter moving quickly, West Georgia on top of this one. In motion, Channing Price. Throw out to Price, he bobbles the ball. It is ruled 
an incomplete pass. If that ball went backwards in any fashion, it would be a fumble, but it looks like it's going to be ruled incomplete. Man down on the field for West Georgia, though. It's Stan Rowe, the backup running back. That's one thing they don't need, another injury to a, to a running back position. As we mentioned, Abe Felix is out with a leg injury, and having Stan Rowe maybe take some time off. As we see here, he's getting off on his own power, which is a good sign for West Georgia. So a big break for West Georgia. That pass ruled incomplete. Otherwise, it would have been a Blazer touchdown. And a big third down and one early in this game. VSU could use a stop. Two receivers to the far side, Holbrook and Johnny Williams. In the backfield, Javari Taylor. Handoff is to Taylor. He's got enough for the first and a little bit more as he gets out to the 19. Gain of four, first down for West Georgia. Just line them up, pound through. As we, as we see here, Javari Taylor just having taking five, six, seven Blazer defenseman before he's finally wrapped up in the West Georgia band, making the long trip from Carrollton, has something to be excited about here in the opening quarter at Valdosta State. First and 10 on the Brave 20, 643 left in the first quarter. Man in motion for the Braves, Yenser, play action, rolls out to his right, fires one complete. They'll mark him out at the 29 yard line. It'll be second down and one. Johnny Williams on the reception, a man out of LaGrange, Georgia. Bryce, the Black Swarm just looks completely out of sync here. Four of the Blazers defensemen bite the play action fake, allowing Brett Yesner with the time to throw to Johnny Williams, which is a nine yard completion, brings up second and one from the 29 yard line. Three receivers set, Holbrook in motion. He's a 6'6 receiver. Blitz coming from Michael Cullen. Taylor gets back to the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten the first down. We'll see where they spot it. It looks like they're going to spot it right on the 30, which looks like it will be enough for the first. So the, the Braves convert Brett Yenser leading the team. So far, he's been pretty accurate. More accurate than his predecessor, Keats Baldwin, who had only completed 43.4% of his passes on the season. Well, he's two for three with about 60 yards, so has to be doing something right. Yenser, sacked. The blitz came from the safety position, Scott Foss. A nine yard loss, but there's yellow on the field, a flag down. We'll see what the call is. Even with the penalty, might be going against the Blazers. Great job there by the Blazers blitz to pick up the play action by Scott Foss and by Tim Thompson. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalty is declined because of the sack. It'll be second down in about 18. First down marker marked right at the 40-yard line for West Georgia. Bre Bryce, that's one of the keys to the game for the Black Swarm is to put pressure on what would be Alec Baldwin, but now it's Brett Yesner because the Braves O-line. Keats, Alec Baldwin might be doing a movie somewhere. Oh, my, my <laughs> bad, my bad. But uh, for the Blazers, Black Swarm to put pressure on the QB because the West Georgia offensive line is worst in the league, allowing quarterback sacks. Taylor in motion. Yenser dumps it over the middle. It is incomplete. Referee got knocked down on that play. Umpire almost made a tackle on that play. Pass was a little bit too high for Javari Taylor in a third and extremely long coming up for West Georgia. Defense starting to make a little bit of a stand. They gave up that one huge pass play to Bo Wittemeyer. This is, this is something we're really going to see out of the West Georgia Brights. Shotgun formation, three wide receivers. Hand off Javari Taylor, brought down Michael Cullen, the first one there. Gain of three, not going to be near enough for the first down. He's brought down by number 50, 
And Valdosta State will force West Georgia to punt this one. Good stand by the Blazers, by the Black Swarm. They really needed, needed this one to put their offense back on the field because the offense, aside from those two miscues, have been doing a very effective job of moving the ball down the field. Blazers look like they're going to try to block this one. Jeff Carpenter to kick it away for the Braves. Back deep, Bernard George. There's a flag. Blazers pointing at West Georgia. Looks like a false start. We'll move him back even further. So false start against West Georgia. Guilty party number 24, Breon Ford, junior from Lindale, Georgia. That'll move him back five yards and even more of a chance for VSU to try to block one. And Bryce, the last home game versus Henderson State but for homecoming, the Blazers did manage to block a punt as we see here, a timeout on the field. They re-spot the ball, it was a yard off. Referee blunder right there. 4.34 and ticking away. In the first quarter of play, West Georgia on top, 7-0. Carpenter gets it off. It's a tumbling punt. Bernard George will let it roll, and it takes a huge, brave roll all the way down to the Blazer 23. A monster punt from Jeff Carpenter. And Valdosta State once again takes over inside their own 30-yard line. Let's see if the Blazer offense can come out and attack this West Georgia defense. This West Georgia defense is known for its aggressive play. It's known for just coming after the quarterback. Let's see if Barrett Wilkes and Coach Hatcher can call plays to use that aggressiveness and over-pursuing capability to their advantage. Coming out in the eye formation. Milton, the blocking back. Vincent Brown, seven deep. Four men on the line for West Georgia. Hand off to Brown. Spins away, but is tackled in the backfield. Loss of two. West Georgia, good penetration from the defensive line. And big number 52, Chris Mitchin. John Perkins made the initial contact on that play. And that's nothing unusual, because John Perkins and Kelvin, Rob Kelvin Morris just patrol the middle of that defense to perfection, it seems like. Second and 12. Three receivers to the near side, including freshman Dedrick Smith. Blitz, Wilkes steps up, throws over the middle. He's got Derek Tharp. Enough for the first down. Tharp dives ahead to the 40. And a big gain of 17 on the pass play. Barrett Wilkes here having his eyes in the back of his head come to use again. Barrett Wilkes feeling the pressure Steps up in the pocket to find himself more time. Throws on the run, a bullet to, De to Derek Tharp, who takes it down to the 40-yard line. First and 10, Valdosta State on their own 40-yard line with 3.19 to go here in the first quarter. Screen pass, Tyler Arndt, lead blocker. Was Vincent Brown gain of four on the first down play. Tyler Arndt's first catch of the day. John Perkins again with a tackle. We're going to be calling his name and Kelvin Morris's name a lot today. Under three minutes in a quick first quarter. No huddle once again for the air raid. Aren't to the far side. Felton and Smith to the near side along with Tharp. In the backfield is Vincent Brown. Handoff, Brown. Wrapped up as he crossed to the 46, gain of two. Third down and four facing the Blazers right now. I see a lot of support here today by the Blazer fans coming out, realizing the importance of this game to maintain possession of that peach basket and to say to West Georgia, you're not the best D2 football team in the state. You haven't been for the past five years. Of course, two other Georgia teams 
Division II in that regional ranking, Albany State, and then also Fort Valley 7. Spread formation, Wilkes steps up, finds Jeffrey Felton, a nice sliding catch for Felton at the 35. They'll mark him at the 36. And first down, flame red and black. Good awareness by Barrett Wilkes, recognizing that Jeffrey Felton was covered by John Perkins. And when you put the speed of Jeffrey Felton against John Perkins, even as outstanding of a football player as John Perkins is, he is not going to be able to match Jeffrey Felton one-on-one -on -one when you're talking about speed. So good, good play calling and good play awareness by Barrett Wilkes. Here comes the blitz. Wilkes steps up, it was picked up well, and he overthrows his man, Arendt, who is coming back on a hook pattern. He was open, Wilkes overthrew him. That's about the third or fourth time that Barrett Wilkes has been able to recognize the blitz coming at him and has been able to make room for himself to throw the ball by stepping up in the pocket and buying himself some more time. If he can do that against West Georgia, the Blazers will have a much better chance of succeeding where they want to succeed at. Second and 10, ball spotted on the 36 yard line of West Georgia. Blitz from the outside, Wilkes throws it that way. Derek Tharp looking for a block, Tharp to the 30. Inside to the 24 yard line where he's taken down close to a Blazer first. Jonah Katende, the rover for the Braves, should have had that tackle, but he let go the legs. Play action there by Barrett to Vincent. Throws on the run to Dedrick, as you see there. Should have had that tackle right there, but a good job of breaking the tackle there by Derek Tharp, bringing up a first and 10 for the Blazers with just over a minute to go in the first quarter from the West Georgia 24 yard line. Arn and Smith to the far side, Tharp to the near. Hand off Vincent Brown, met by Perkins. Maybe one on the carry from Vincent. He's slow to getting up, Bryce. And he's limping, looks like on his ankle. That's not a good sign, Bryce. Vincent Brown just getting back to near 100%. And to see him stumble off the field like this, it's got to be crushing every Blazer fan's heart right now because the last person you want to see go down in preparation for the playoffs is our big running back, Vincent Brown. Well, he has been a huge part of the resurgence of the offense. William Milton to take his place. Brown will be taken down to the trainer's table and see what they can do. Clock at 20 seconds, play clock down to seven. Callaway in motion. Wilkes throwing, looking, goes to his Fourth option and William Milton hit hard, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Gain of one. He stayed in bounds on the hit and the clock will run out and that will be it for the first quarter. This one's in the books in the Peach State rivalry. Valdosta State down, seven nothing. West Georgia coming into town with a very strong play. We'll be back on VSU TV in just a minute with your second quarter. A beautiful university under the palms and pines of South Georgia. Just above the Florida border. Halfway between Atlanta and Orlando. We are Valdosta State University. Outstanding academics, a showplace for the arts. And the home of champions. Vision. Success. And you. Prepare for your world. By coming to ours. Building for our next century, Valdosta State University. Back on VSU TV, Valdosta State down seven nothing, a big third and eight. Ball spotted on the 22 yard line of the Braves. Here comes the blitz from the outside. Wilkes throwing into the end zone, double coverage. Derrick Smith tipped away. Triple coverage is what that turned into. And Valdosta State might have squandered an opportunity here to score a touchdown. Here, here comes the field goal unit of Michael Green, and his specialty is long field goals. This, of course, being about a 40-yarder. 39, 38 yards. But on comment to the last play call there by Coach Hatcher, they're just trying to 
attack this West Georgia defense where they're most vulnerable at, and that is the defensive secondary. So I don't blame Coach Hatcher at all for trying to but catch that's them a, off a guard. third down and eight, you still have a lot of room to play with. And even a shorter completed pass gives a shorter field goal opportunity if you miss it. The kick is up, and it is straight through the uprights. No chance of that one not making it. Michael Green strikes, and it's 7-3. Valdosta State strikes first here in the second quarter, but still down four to the West Georgia Braves. It's important for the Blazers, though, to establish a sense of what they're trying to do against this conference-leading defense that West Georgia has. They've been moving the ball effectively, and aside from those two turnovers the Blazers have committed, they have constantly been moving the ball and not being pushed back at all, except for the penalties. Blazer fans enjoying a Blazer score, a scoreless first quarter. Valdosta State doesn't usually get shut out in the first. Don't forget to listen to WVVS 90.9 Blaze FM every Sunday at 9 p.m. until midnight for your weekly dose of nostalgia called Lest We Forget. Your host, Skip Gildersleeve, brings the past to life as WVVS celebrates over 30 years of music on the edge. Call 333-5661 for your request. That's a very good radio station, by the way, Bryce. Blaze FM. And the new logo and everything. Looks very snazzy. Sorry you're not going to be around to see it go up in popularity. That's right. But I think I've been here long enough, and I've seen enough of V91 slash Blaze FM to satisfy me in my college career. 14-48, Blazers on the bottom side of the score. So used to saying on top. It's still early in this one. Greens kick a booming one with the wind. Bo Whitmire fields at the one. Whitmire gets around the defense, knocked out of bounds at the 25. And that's where Brett Yenser will take over. And his first half numbers, not that bad. Two of four, but 67 yards. He also threw that big 58-yard bomb to Whitmire. Aside from that huge play, the Blazer defense has been able to come up and stop West Georgia. West Georgia is not doing a very good job of rushing the football. Stan Rose got one carry for nine yards. Devari Taylor, Taylor, five carries for eight yards. So if the, if the Blazers can keep this up, they will stand a chance of just keeping themselves in the ball game to take the lead on future possessions. Holbrook in motion. Yenser pitches it out. This one, Stan Rowe trips in the backfield. They'll mark him down near the 22. A loss of three, maybe four yards, as Stan Rowe tripped on the toss play to the outside. It wasn't like he was going to get very much anyway because in position to tackle Stan Rowe was Donnie Daniels. He was about to lay a licking on Stan Rowe. Maybe Stan Rowe was just afraid he was going to lose his life and decided to fall down in the backfield. Quick snap, handoff, Rowe. There's a big hole. He squirts up the middle. Gets to the 31. Gain of around eight. And it'll be third down and five. We talked about before the game how Southern Arkansas and West Georgia, while they lead the league and while they're the two top teams in, in rushing in the conference, they do it in two completely different formats. Southern Arkansas is an option team, and West Georgia is a pound it down your throat. As we saw in that replay, that's exactly what they did for that seven-yard gain. Set the throw out to Johnny Williams. They'll mark him down right at the 36 yard line, but it might be a generous spot. Looks like it will be enough for the first down. They're gonna measure it just to be sure. Just a little simple out route there by West Georgia. And all they needed to do was just get to the first down marker and make the catch for the first down. The measurement shows that they are just a couple inches short. Update here on the Blazers star running back Vincent Brown. He has a twisted angle, ankle. 
He is being re-evaluated re re on the sidelines. Like, I can't talk today. And he will be back in the game shortly. I don't have quite the linguistical skills that Bryce has over here. So fourth down and extremely short. What does West Georgia do here? You turn it over, you turn it over deep in your own territory. What do you do? You do what West Georgia does and run the ball straight through the Blazers defensive line. Two receivers to the far side. It's Williams and Holbrook. In the backfield, Stan Rowe. Watch out for the fullback, Brian Davis. Yenser trying to get the Blazers to jump. And it looks, it looked to me as if West Georgia jumped on the line, not LeVar Stoller. LeVar Stoller was twitching, but I don't think he ever broke the plane. He did not. It is going to be a false start call on the Braves. Exactly what the Blazers needed. Now there is no chance that the Braves are going to go for it on fourth and six. So a good defensive stand for Valdosta State will result in a Jeff Carpenter punt. And really, when you take away the 58-yard pass, so far, West Georgia's only been able to get 25, maybe 26 yards total offense. Which says a lot about what Coach Anders and the coaching staff have preached about in practice this week. Allow them to run the football, but not to make the huge running plays. Carpenter doing a little bit of acting as the Blazers try to block that one. Bernard George turns the corner. Bernard George cuts back up field, but he fumbled the ball. Now picked it back up. Kelvin Morris was closing in as George nearly broke that one big. There's a flag on the play. We'll see what it results in, most likely a VSU penalty. Block in the back by Valdosta State. That'll move him back. After a decent return by Bernard George, looked like he wasn't going to get any sort of yardage, then turned the corner and nearly broke it big. He had four or five Braves within two yards of him. And all he made all but one miss, and then the one they didn't make miss eventually made the tackle. So that'll put Valdosta State on their own 31. Barrett Wilkes back into the game along with William Milton. The will take over Vincent Brown still on the shelf. No, he, Brown's back in the game. So very shortly. Just one series missed by the star running back of the Valdosta State team. Let's see how he functions with an ankle almost twisted. A twisted ankle. Wilkes, screen pass. Vincent Brown, spin move. Gets to the 37, or excuse me, the 34, with 12 minutes, 22 seconds taken away here in the first half. On that play, it didn't seem like Vincent Brown is affected by an injured ankle at all. He showed the, st he showed the same burst of speed, he showed the same quickness, the same ability to cut. Looks like it was just a, a stinger on the ankle. Three yard gain. Second down and seven for Wilkes in the spread offense. Blitz coming, Tyler Arendt nearly got around. Adam Carter on the reception will be close to a VSU first down. Probably a little bit short as they mark it inside the 39. Brings up a third down and two, or third down and one. As we, as we see, yeah, you're right, Bryce. He almost did get around the Braves defensive back. It would have taken it a long way. Just a quick slant pattern there. I formation Valdosta State. Six down linemen for VSU. Handoff, Brown, upfield. More than enough for the first down as he gets to the 44. Bryce, you're a huge, huge fan of the I formation, and we see why. We've already talked in, in past games about how in the I formation you have more of a momentous start and compared to a shotgun drive where you have to get up to your full speed in one or two steps were compared to five or six with the I formation. 11 minutes, 10 seconds, Blazers down four, seven three, but trying to put together a drive here in the second quarter. Three receivers to the far side, including Jeffrey Felton. To the near side, it's Tyler Arendt. Wilkes running, throws over the middle, intercepted by John Perkins. Perkins 
down. And an interception, the third turnover in the first half, half. for Valdosta State. Barrett was being pressured. He was, he got hit right as he released the ball. He was trying to hit, I believe, Jeffrey Felton going across the far side to the near side of the, of the field. And when you have either Kelvin Morris or John Perkins in the vicinity of a pass, they're going to pick it off. But they're going to do something to do something special. Perkins' second interception of the season. Barrett's second of the day. Taylor, the cutback, and he's got room. Bowls his way to the 36. Nine yard gain by Javari Taylor. Great cutback. Absolutely phenomenal cutback. Whoop, right there. Great job of blocking number 55, Carlos Russell, by one of the West George offensive linemen, number 66, Brandon McLeod, pushing him away from the play to allow Tavari Taylor the room to run through that hole. Yenser, handoff to the fullback, Davis, enough for the first. A little bit of trash talking, a little bit of trash tackling there by the Blazers and the Braves. Just goes to show you how much passion these two teams have to just beat the brains out of each other. 10 minutes, three seconds, clock being restarted right now. West Georgia with a first down inside Blazer territory. First and 10 for the Braves, the Valdosta State 34 yard Yen, sir. Play action. Now it's a reverse to Whitemeyer. Whitmire at the 30, tries to cut up field. Good job by the Blazers to snuff that one out. Gain of four. That one could have been a lot bigger, though. At first, I was under the impression that it was just going to be a simple handoff to the running back. But when I saw the reverse, it just caught me completely off guard. Antoine Harris, no, that's Gio. Gio Blaylock almost made a play there. I thought that this play was going to go for a lot more yards than it was. But credit the Blazer defense, the Blazer defense, for running and for always hustling to get over to the far side of the field to make the tackle. Bryson Holbrook to the near side, to the far side. It's Emory Jones. Handoff, Taylor, he's got room. Met by Scott Foss, but a missed tackle brought down by James Hutley at the 26. You know, for a, for a rather big back that Javari Taylor is, 5'9", 197 from Decatur, he is surprisingly quick as we see another cut move. And then when he sees Scott Foss, he's like, sorry, I'll just bowl you right over, getting two or three more yards. This West Georgia team has come to play today here at Valdosta State, and they are sure one heck of a football team. Third and three, eight minutes, 24 seconds, ticking away here in the first. Thrown up, Sean Harris with the D, but the pass is ruled complete. Ruled complete at the two. An amazing catch by Johnny Williams as he went up and over Sean Harris. To me, it didn't look like he had possession of the ball before he was knocked out of bounds. He had possession, and the main reason why that play worked, look where Sean Harris is. Only then does he look back for the ball. He also looks like that he got away with a pass interference call, too. Could have gone either way. The referees are letting these two rivals play. Sometimes I can hurt you, sometimes I can benefit you. Sean Harris, I mean, he had great position. He was all over. Johnny Williams just went up and made the catch. Yenser, handoff, Taylor, end zone, touchdown, West Georgia. And just like that, two turnovers quickly resulting in touchdowns for West Georgia. The offense has only been good for West Georgia after a turnover. Javari Taylor just pushes us right, right into our end zone, just taking two, three Blazers with him. And just like that, the, the Braves have managed to climb on top 13 to three with the extra point waiting by Audi Burkich, and the kick is good. So just like that, with just over eight minutes to go in the first half, the Braves are surprising everybody except us and their fans here, beating Valasa State 14 to three. 
Well, this is the second straight week that Valdosta State turnovers have quickly resulted into points. Last week against Southern Arkansas, they were down 16-0 at one point, and then also 26-14 at the half. So being behind doesn't phase Valdosta State, but you sure don't want to fall too far behind a good defense like West Georgia. If you fall behind, you you definitely have your work cut out for you trying to outplay, outcall the best defense in the Gulf South Conference, excluding North Alabama. But even if you're playing a Wachita Baptist or a Henderson State or another low-level team in the conference, if you turn the ball over, you stand a very low chance of winning a ball game. It's common sense. Take care of the football. Take care of the football, tackle well, and manage the clock. Usually the three most important keys to winning a ball game as we see Sherrard Reynolds set to take the, the kickoff back at his own five yard line. VSU needs something good to happen desperately. They need Barrett Wilkes to find his rhythm like he did on some of his first possessions, excluding the three interceptions he's thrown. He's done a good job of moving the Blazers down the field. Good kick by Burkich. Taken in the end zone. Sherrard Reynolds to the outside. Reynolds upfield. Sherrard Reynolds with a couple to beat. Just barely tackled as he gets close to the 35 yard line. A saving tackle by West Georgia as Sherrard Reynolds had one more guy and then he was gone. Barrett Wilkes is set to come back into the game. Doesn't look like Coach Hatcher or Coach Dean are going to put Tucker, Tucker Pruitt. Pruitt. Tucker Pruitt is coming into the game. Well, Tucker Pruitt, as you see Sherrard Reynolds leaping over in a saving tackle by Kelvin Farrell. But here's Tucker Pruitt, the former Purple Hurricane of Fitzgerald County. It's like the coaches go against whatever I'm trying to say. And Pruitt is met hard by Kelvin Morris. Kelvin Morris is saying to the freshman, welcome to the Gulf South Conference. I'm Kelvin Morris. I'll be the linebacker sacking you today. Absolutely no time and no hesitation for West Georgia to blitz the freshman quarterback. Seven minutes, 40 seconds, West Georgia on top by 11, 14 to three. Three receivers to the far side. Vincent Brown in the backfield. Tucker Pruitt, your new quarterback. Set the throw, Pruitt over the middle. Reynolds just nearly picked off by Jonah Katende. He read Pruitt's eyes the entire way. They tried to hit Reynolds on an inside pattern, unable to do so, and all of a sudden it's third down and 13, and VSU is reeling. Tucker Pruitt failed to even look at other receivers and credit West Georgia, credit Jonah Katende for coming in there because Tucker Pruitt didn't even see him. He was eyeing Sherrod Reynolds the entire way, didn't even see Katende come in there and once again, the Blazers are lucky not to have committed their fourth turnover of the first half. Unbelievable. Inconceivable. Third down, 13, ball on the 30 yard line of Valdosta State. Pruitt. Under a little bit of pressure, throws. It's tipped and nearly intercepted again. Flag on the play. Looks like it might be a legal procedure or offsides call. The car leaks, pointing towards West Georgia, saying it was on them. VSU could definitely use a break here. It will be against West Georgia. Five yard penalty offside. So that was a free play for Tucker Pruitt. You see the strength of Pruitt's arm, but it seems a little, a little off. inexperienced. The mentality is not there like it is for Barrett Wilkes. And that's only going to get better when Tucker Pruitt has more playing time. But you just don't like your chances when you're putting in a true freshman quarterback against a West Georgia defense. But we'll see what happens. Third down. Blitz coming. Pruitt can't get away from it. Odell Willis. 
brings down Tucker Pruitt. The offensive line right now from the outside is just getting manhandled. The speed that this West Georgia pass rush brings in. And you know what? Valdosta State on that series never even attempted to run the ball. That's why. As I mean, right there, Odell beating, beating Richard Collier out of all people. Richard Collier is one of a premier bunch of offensive linemen in the Gulf South Conference. And conference. So just to see that, if you see the kick almost blocked. Instead, it's a really high kick. Fair catch called by Channing Price. He'll take over at the 43 in West Georgia, bringing all the momentum and the ball back as they take good field position with 634 remaining here in the first half. Big. Inter interested in going to other countries? Be a part of VSU's study abroad program. The European Council is hosting summer study programs in London, Paris, Russia, Germany, Spain, Greece, and Italy for summer 2006. For more information, call 333-7410. Yenser hands it off. It's Stan Rowe, met hard by Michael Cullen. Gain of one. That's what the Blazers need. The Blazers need to realize where West Georgia is attacking to find those holes when they open up and then to attack. Right there, Michael Collier recognizes the opening in the offensive line and puts himself in there. It's gonna be important for the Blazers not to over pursue and to have wrap ups, not give the West Georgia offensive players the ability to break numerous tackles. Second and nine, under six minutes remaining. Kitchen showing blitz. Play action, rolling out to his right. Ginser fires one. This is ruled a completed catch. Johnny Williams apparently dragged his feet to stay in bounds. First down, West Georgia. And Ginser, once again, very accurate on the run. This West Georgia offense seems to be running on all cylinders, Bryce. It doesn't seem like the Blazers have been able to do much to stop them unless the West Georgia offense has found itself with bad field position. Only then have the Blazers managed to step up. But now the Braves are just moving right on down the field, doing things at their own pace and at their own will. First down from the Blazer 40. Yenser hands it off. Stan Rowe to the left side, taken down. Gain of two, maybe three yards. Good job of blocking by the fullback, Brian Davis, on the play. He just wasn't able to block Tim Thompson. I don't think anybody is able to, play, able to block Tim Thompson. But the Braves are executing offense very efficiently. They're finding their holes, and the running back is managing to follow the fullback. And that's one thing that if you do that, you will gain positive yards every single time. Three receivers set, Whitmore, Whitmire, Holbrook, and Emory Jones to the far side. Yenser, play action. Kelvin Roberts finds Yenser in the backfield for the sack. The first sack in two weeks for this Black Swarm team. Big loss on the play and no better timing than right then for Kelvin Roberts to just beat his man around the block. Second sack on the day by the Blazers and the West Georgia play action isn't working as well as they'd hoped. Maybe they should just stick with flat out running the football because that is what seems to be working so far. But not now when you have a third down 16 on the Blazers 46 yard line with just over, just under four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Yenser throwing. Hit hard from behind. This one is ruled a fumble. No. Saying incomplete, the referee ruled that one incomplete. They ruled the Barrett Wilkes one a fumble, and Valdosta State fans can't believe it. Either way, it's going to be a fourth down. Yenser gets up hurting. The referee is fooling everybody here. They're pressured. Tim Thompson comes from behind. That looks like it's a fumble, Bryce, but the ref did nothing. The ref waited about five to ten seconds after it to declare incomplete. He threw down his little beanie, too. When he does that, it marks loose ball, go out to the play. The refs are, in that call, the refs were definitely not on the right page. 
Carpenter to kick for the third time today. Blazers back in coverage. Bernard George calls for a fair catch and he juggles it. And a flag called. Odell Willis for touching the receiver after the fair catch was called. Looks like it's gonna be the personal foul kick catch interference, but I'm unsure about that, Bryce, because he bumbled it. He, he, was, he didn't have true possession of the ball, and if that happens, it's a live ball, it's anybody's game. But you still have to allow the receiver to catch the ball, but if he doesn't have possession, by all means, go in there and get the ball. But let's see what the what the refereeing crew was going to do after they really messed up a couple of plays ago. Personal foul on Odell Willis. That'll move him back 15 yards, so better field position after the penalty, of course, for Valdosta State. And we'll see which quarterback comes charging in, both of them with their helmets on, Wilkes and Tucker Pruitt. And here comes Barrett Wilkes into the game. So Pruitt won series, three incomplete passes, two of which were nearly picked off. Two sacks as well. And here comes Barrett Wilkes, Sherrard Reynolds and Travis Taylor to the near side. There's your speed, Parker and Callaway to the far side. Vincent Brown in the backfield. VSU did not run the ball on their last possession. Four minutes, six seconds left here in the first half. Blitz coming. Bear Wilkes keeps it, but he slips. He had room to run, but he slipped on the sprint turf. Be a loss of a yard, second down and 11 for VSU. West Georgia defense is having their way with the, with the hatch attack. There's no other way to put it. The Blazers have got to go into halftime, regroup, find the plays that were able to get them to move the ball down the field. But at the same time, they have to keep in mind, West Georgia is readjusting as well because a good defense calls plays and finds points of weakness to correct themselves. Three and a half. Wilkes to throw. Over the middle, incomplete. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Zach Parker, they're tied in for the Blazers. Yeah, he was wide open at around the 35 to 40 yard line and Barrett Wilkes just missed him. Wilkes has been suffering from a sore shoulder. That's why Tucker Pruitt got some snaps last week and got most of the snaps two weeks ago in practice. Blazers down 11, three minutes, 20 seconds. They've been unable to run the ball. Save one big run from Vincent Brown on this West Georgia attack. Third and 11. Wilkes, draw play, Vincent Brown, up the middle, to the 30. Not gonna be enough for the first down. They were trying to catch the Braves off guard. Almost worked, but on a third down and 11, you're not gonna have much success. Good call there by the Blazers to try and find a point of weakness to this Braves defense, but it is definitely not working here in the first half, Bryce. That might have been a, a safer call on a second down. Why on a third down and 11? Valdosta State, play calling, but there's one thing you've learned from watching Coach Hatcher and the Blazers is never to count them out. Tidwell punts this one. It's a pretty good one. Price fields it at the 32, taken down at the 35. Initial contact made by number 59, Will Weaver, the deep snapper. Bryce, we're at just at 2.30 to go here in the first half. West Georgia up 14-3 on BSU. And like we've talked about before and we've seen so far on this game, West Georgia is doing what they do best. They're pounding the ball, but they are getting the plays that they need. They are getting turnovers. And they're not turning the ball and they're taking care of the football West Georgia is right now. And without turnovers, Valdosta State's defense, they've kind of feasted off that all season long at a plus seven ratio coming into the game. Showing blitz. Pass is complete. Lee dropped. Nice recovery. By Emory Jones, as it looked like an easy catch, but Yinser just threw it behind his receiver. Yep. Still, good recovery. I wouldn't have been able to make that. 
Second down and 10, ball spotted on the 35 yard line of West Georgia. Two minutes, 26 seconds left in the first half of the Peach State rivalry for the Peach Basket. Up the middle, Javari Taylor, room to run. Gets seven, brought down by Dustin DeHaven. Another example of the fullback for the, for the, not the Blazers, the Braves, Brian Davis, making the blocks. Javari Taylor just says, I'm gonna run behind my big blocking fullback and he is gonna get me the alleyway that I need to run at. And now the Blazers are looking at a huge third down stop here, third and three. Just under two minutes to go in the ball game. Ball at the Braves 41 yard line. Blaylock showing blitz. Here he comes. The pass is complete to Davis. Not going to be enough for the first down. Good blitz there from the outside. Geo Blaylock made Yenser hurry up his pass. And Valdosta State, with a minute 32, is going to let the clock roll. And try to get a good punt return here from Bernard George. I'm surprised at why the Blazers aren't calling a timeout, Bryce. They have three. If they call a timeout here, they stop the clock with over a minute to go. Instead, the Braves are just going to let the, probably let this clock wind down until under a minute to go. Why are you letting the clock run? Clock continues to roll at a minute seven. Questionable not to use their timeouts. Both teams have all three. Carpenter taking his time. Blazers going to try to block this one. It's a good punt. Bernard George fields it, beats one guy. Holbrook wraps up George as he gets to the 19-yard line. 51.3 remaining here in the first half. Tail of the tape, BSU down on two touchdowns directly resulting from Blazer turnovers. Wilkes has fumbled and thrown two interceptions. Not to mention being sacked about two or three times. Tucker Pruitt also having been sacked. This West Georgia defense seems to be confusing the Blazer, quarter, Blazer quarterbacks. Vincent Brown, I formation. Six down linemen for VSU, two wide receivers. It's a toss play out to Vincent. Yeah, that gets nothing. Only a yard and it looks like VSU is gonna play it safe going to half. Down 11. Bryce, the Blazers are not executing. And we could have told you that at the beginning part of the first quarter. The Blazers and coaches are going to have to get in there, look at some of the first half, figure out how they can beat this West Georgia defense. Because if they come out and play like this, I'm sorry to say, but I believe the Peach mask basket might go home to Carrollton. Last play likely of the first quarter, the first half. Vincent Brown spin move gets two yards. Clock rolling down, 6-5 seconds left here in the first half. And West Georgia will take an 11-point lead into the locker room. The invaders from Carrollton on top trying to spoil Valdosta State's attempt at a co-conference championship. We'll be back on VSU TV with the second half. Stay with us. These hands have done so much in life. They can do so much for life by practicing fire safety. Make your home safe from fire. Learn how to use your fire extinguisher. Plan and practice escape routes. And install and maintain smoke alarms on every level in your home. So you'll be able to give others a hand. Prevent fire, save lives. Go to our website for more information on fire safety. A message from the U.S. Fire Administration. So proudly we hail. Millions of Hispanic American kids are ready to fly. The land of the free. Only education will set them free. And the home of the brave. Hispanic Scholarship Fund, opening American minds.
The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. It takes a man to be a dad. Back on VSU TV, Blazers down in this one, 11 points, a score of 14 to three. We're set for the second half. VSU will kick off to West Georgia, back deep Emory Jones and Bo Whitmire. Michael Green's boot is a low liner. Whitmire will play it to the 22, taken down by Bernard George, who tried to strip the football. He'll mark it out at the 23. And that's where Brett Ginser and West Georgia will take over. Ginser on the day, 6 of 10, 112 yards. He's got a long of 58. Leading the way rushing has been Javari Taylor, 9 Three, carries, 28 yards. Down. Stan Rowe behind him, 5 carries, 18 yards. Taylor's got the touchdown. Carpenter, 4 punts for 44.8, a great average. He also kicked a 59-yarder and only... One punt return from Channing Price, they've been able to limit him, but this West Georgia offense has been able to capitalize on Valdosta State turnovers. And that's why they're up in this ball game. Without the turnovers, you're looking at possibly a 3-0 game or a 7-3 game. Yenser to throw on first down. Over the middle, passes, and nearly intercepted, but caught by Jabriel Holbrook. Scott Foss looked like he had the interception, and. Holbrook just ripped it away from him. Big gain on first down as they cross into Blazer territory. See Brett Yesner, play action, has been working extremely well for the Braves in the first half. But you see here, Scott Foss should have had that interception. Instead, it results in about a 30-yard pass play for West Georgia. Brings up first and 10 for the invaders from Carrollton at the Blazers 49-yard line. 14 and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. High formation. West Georgia, there's the pitch. It was delayed. It looked like a missed play call. Javari Taylor didn't know the pitch was coming to him. He'll be tackled in the backfield, a loss of three. It looks like it wasn't a missed call. It looks like it was a miss, missed play. Uh, Javari Taylor was looked like he was expecting the pitch to go to the other side. Or maybe not. <laughs> maybe it just looked like he wasn't expected to come at all. I kind of don't know things a lot, so. But I try and try, I do. Second down and 12, ball marked at the 49 yard line of West Georgia. <laughs> Hand off Taylor. Up the middle, dives over. Gets four. It'll be second down and nine from the 48. Third down and nine. Third down. Correct. So a big third down early on, 13 and a half here in the third quarter, an extremely fast first half. Just over an hour in total time, which is very quick, especially for a GSC officiated game. Holbrook to the far side of the near side. Channing Price in the West Georgia. Here's the throw and it's batted down by Calvin Roberts. Kelvin Roberts batted that one down. He's been all over the place. Maybe one of the few Blazers that's come out with some fire today. VSU forces a punt, and now the Blazer faithful getting behind the flame red and black. Well, the defense has been able to come up big in certain situations all game long. It's just been that the offense has been unable to do anything except for one drive in which they got three points. And now it's gonna. Now we're really going to see what adjustments the Blazer coaching staff has made at halftime to go against the superb West Georgia defense. But nearly blocked by Chad Bryant. Fair catch and it's dropped. Another turnover recovered by Jabriel Holbrook inside the Blazer 10 and Bernard George the second time that he's fumbled a punt. This has been a common occurrence for Valdosta State. Wayman Ford couldn't handle the punt kicking returns. And now Bernard George's second muff this time though, it goes for a West Georgia turnover inside the Blazer 10. Three turnovers, Bryce. Four, that's four turnovers, two fumbles, two interceptions. And VSU, though their playoff bound is shooting their chances to go 
and celebrate a GSC co-championship with Central Arkansas right down. I was about to say, the three turnovers have led to decent field position on the, on, the, on the game, on the day. Stan Rowe, room to run to the outside, brought down a gain of three. Antoine Harris brings him down at the seven. If the Blazers, Blacksmore manages to go along with the bend, don't break philosophy you and I have stressed a lot of all season, as we see here, huge hole, enough, big enough for a semi truck to come through on that play. Good play by Antoine Harris to drag him down. But the Blazers need to try and see if they can hold West Georgia to a field goal because a 21 to three deficit against the West Georgia defense, I have faith in the Blazers to do it. But it, it might take a whole lot of work. In motion, Channing Price. Whistle, maybe a false start on West Georgia. It's second down and goal, but a five yard penalty couldn't hurt and West Georgia seems to be backing up. It is a delay a game as the play clock ran out. Brett Yenser couldn't get the snap off in time. That'll be a five yard penalty and they'll mark it at the 12. Blazer defense looks like they're lining up in their 4-3. Four three four formation. With second down and goal to go on the twelve yard line. West Georgia can not a shotgun, Bryce. Pro formation. Davis and Rowe in the backfield. Yenser to throw. It's to Davis out of the backfield. Hit by Maurice Leggett. Brought down near the seven yard line. So it'll be third and goal, West Georgia. Out of the shotgun, Brett Yesner finds his fullback considerably open on the near side of the football field. Almost looks like Brian Davis just ran over Maurice Leggett. But credit Maurice Leggett for just sticking his body in there and taking the brunt forces now. The Blazer crowd trying to get their defense pumped up. Third down and goal at the eight yard line. 11 and a half remaining in the third quarter. Yet. So to throw into the end zone, the pass is way wide, nearly picked off by Bernard George. And here comes the field goal unit. So a big stand after a huge turnover by Valdosta State. And we'll see if they try to block this one as Jeff Carpenter comes in to kick, or excuse me, to hold the point for Adi Burkich. Blazers need to try and see if they can block this pump, but even if they don't, a 17-3 lead is a whole lot better than a 21-3 deficit. The snap and the kick. It is through the uprights, and it's a 17-3 West Georgia lead here in Valdosta. 11-21 remaining in the third quarter, and it's a two-touchdown game. The Braves on top looking for the peach basket. All 17 points resulting directly off turnovers. You're not gonna win. I mean, I can't stress this enough. This is probably at least the fourth or fifth time I have repeated this fact in this telecast. Turn the ball over, you're gonna make yourself vulnerable to more points. And the West Georgia defense has caused three of those turnovers and lackluster, lacklusting of a punt return for the fourth turnover. And it's not going to work out if you continue to play sloppy ball. Come celebrate your 2004 NCAA Division II National Champions with the Chris Hatcher Show, airing every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on BSU TV Cable Channel 11. That's the Chris Hatcher Show every Tuesday night at 6.30 and Wednesday night at 8 on BSU TV Cable Channel 11. It doesn't look like Coach Hatcher is going to have much to celebrate if the game continues the way it's going right now. But we'll see what happens. The Blazers are known this year to be a second half team. Berkic, a pooch kick. Jeffrey Felton to field it. Felton around the outside and he's got room to run. Felton to the 40, cuts back. And that's where he's taken down by Lorico Stevenson, but a good return by Jeffrey Felton on the pooch kick.
Excellent field position for the Blazers. Jeffrey Felton, not the usual return man, but he finds a hole, tries to make the most of it, switches hands there. Good, good protection of the ball there by Jeffrey Felton. As we see here, Barrett Welts is behind center again. First and 10 for the Blazers at their own 40 yard line. Brown in the backfield. Reynolds and Taylor looks like an offsides. Reynolds on the screen pass for up to 12 yards. So it looked like he was initially gonna be tackled for four. And then Shroy Reynolds keeps his feet churning, gets the first down and into West Georgia territory, a gain of 12. Sherrod Reynolds makes the catch, follows behind his blockers as Bryce mentioned. Keeps those legs turning, goes behind Travis Taylor there. And it is indeed an offsides penalty on West Georgia. The Blazers will decline this penalty, which results in a first and 10 for the Blazers at the West Georgia 48 yard line. And Bryce, one of the main reasons or one of the main factors we talked about before the telecast was the Blazers ability to run the football and they've done a pretty good job of that Vincent Brown has won has run 10 times for 50 for 53 yards but a large chunk of that coming on a big 33 yard gain true but they have been able to get past the, the vaunted front seven of the West Georgia Braves Wilkes to throw Zach Parker complete side swipes a man rolls over another one as he gets to the 44 Good first down completion, about five yards gained. It'll be second and five. See play action there by Barrett Wilkes. Throwing on the run, finds Zach Parker. Great adjustment there by Zach Parker to, first of all, avoid that first tackle and then gain about two or three yards extra on the play, bringing up third, second down and six. Another screen pass, Derek Tharp this time to the 50, or excuse me, 40. inside the 40. They'll mark him down at the 37 or the 38 yard line. Looks very close to a first down on the play. Be close, very close to the blazer first. Blazer. It will be a blazer first down and now using those screen passes to move the chains. They're taking advantage, they're spreading out this West Georgia defense and that may be one of the main things the Blazers can do if they start taking control of this ball game. Handoff, Vincent Brown up the middle. Slides his way inside the 35. Gain of three or four. And it'll be second down and six with 9.41 ticking here in the third quarter. Blazers down 14. Blazers having no huddle. They're running no huddle too. They're not taking a lot of time. They're trying to attack this defense. Hand off again, Vincent Brown. Tries to cut up the middle inside the 30. Dragged all the way to the 26. Another VSU first down. One of the keys to the ball game in the first half that we stressed stressed was the Blazers' ability to control the line of scrimmage. And as you see here, look at 61, look at 63, look at 64, the Blazers' offensive linemen pushing back the D linemen of West Georgia, which in turn pushes back the linebackers of West Georgia, opening up holes for the Blazers to go from. Screen pass, Tharp nearly stripped. He held on to it, might have gotten a yard. Derek Tharp juggled the pass and was nearly stripped by the West Georgia defense. Brand Brandon Jameson. Back. Yeah. Brandon Jameson. Jameson. We have an injury on the field now, Bryce, for West Georgia. Breon Ford down, we'll come back and let you know what happened to him right here on VSU TV. Blazers down 14. Valdosta State University. The pathway to success. I love VSU because from the moment I came here, it's just been like a second home. This place was just like home for me, and I love it. I'll always love it. Just above the Florida border, VSU is a second home for students from all over Georgia, 47 states, and 58 countries. A quality university degree, a unique second home, a great location. Valdosta State University, your pathway to success. Back on VSU TV, Ford being helped off the field by a group of West Georgia trainers. Second down and nine on the West Georgia 26, Barrett Wilkes. Three receivers to the near side, Reynolds, Tharp, and Travis Taylor to the far side, it's Zach Parker. They jump, free play, Wilkes going towards the end zone. 
Pass is intercepted. It's a free play as Jamison jumped offside, as did Odell Willis. So that interception won't matter. It'll be a five-yard penalty in second down and four. Just trying to see if they could get some positive yards or some points on that play. But Bryce, you're seeing the Blazers finally establishing themselves a solid offensive rhythm. We talked about during the break how the many screens that they're running, it stretches out the defense, allowing plays to concentrate on the sidelines, which in turn open up space along the middle. Thank you for saying that, Bryce. Spread offense. Tharp, Parker to the far side. Reynolds and Taylor in the near side slot. Eight minutes, 43 seconds remaining here in the third. Handoff, Vincent Brown looking for a hole to run through. Gets close to the 15. Should be enough for the Blazer first. Blazers first down. It is enough for the first down, Bryce. BSU just chipping away right now. Which is good. They haven't been able to chip away at all except for that one field goal drive they got. Vincent Brown taking the handoff. And those screen plays, as, as we said, have opened up the middle. Great job of blocking there by C.A. Sanders, the big 275-pound sophomore offensive guard from Moultrie, Georgia. As now the Blazers look at themselves at a first and 10 at the Taylor in motion. Line. Wilkes rolling out now, throws back to Zach Parker. Jamison chasing Parker up the middle. He tried to cut back. He'll be taken down at the nine. That was the first time the Blazers have gone to the huddle before a play in this drive. Remind, that play reminded me a lot of the play against Albany State last year in the regional finals, how all the attention was brought to one side of the field, and Zach Parker seemed like he had a lot of space, but then he remembered, oh yeah, I'm playing West Georgia. They can run fast. So it brings up now a second down and four for the Blazers. Brown hit at the line of scrimmage. Might have been a loss on the play. Seven and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter and a big third down for VSU. Got to think that Valdosta State needs a touchdown here. Without a doubt. You're down 17 to three against a defense that is not allowing a lot of points or a lot of yards. And cutting into a 17 to three lead with a 17 to six score, it's not going to prove a lot of diehard Blazer fans are gonna be happy if that indeed happens, but we'll find out. Wilkes. To the end zone, Travis Taylor, incomplete. Once again on third and short, Barrett Wilkes tries to go to the end zone. Might have put a little bit too much air under that. Travis Taylor can run, he's got speed. Under through him. Barrett Wilkes, like we said before, too much air, allowing three West Georgia Braves time enough to go up to go up and get it. And it looks like that Larico Stevenson almost made the interception on that play and Coach Hatcher is not thinking like us, Bryce. Michael Green is coming out to attempt about a 27-yard field goal. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is through. And the lead cut back to 11. So Valdosta State unable to punch it in the end zone, but they do get a field goal from Michael Green. And the Blazers continue to struggle to put up big points on the board. They manage to find big plays sometimes, but then they don't manage to find the biggest play of all, pushing the ball into the end zone. And we said before, a 17 to six lead, you got points on the board, you managed to get a drive without a turnover. That's something positive to take away against this West Georgia defense. But when you're down in the 10 yard line, you've got to come up with a touchdown. Local elections are taking place throughout the Valdosta Lowndes County area this Tuesday, so tune in for complete election coverage on Vote 2005 Tuesday, November 8th, starting at 8 p.m. on VSU TV. For all your local election coverage, Vote 2005 is the place, and it can only be found on VSU TV at 8 p.m. starting November 8th. This Tuesday. That is correct. Not a lot of hype as obviously the election was a couple years ago when, you know, presidential election. presidential election. That was pretty important. I would say so. I voted for you for president, Bryce. I just wanted to say that. That was a write-in vote? Yes. yes. I think I got four. 
four votes for President of the United States. But you know, you have to be 35. That's true. Under seven minutes, VSU cut the lead to 11, and the little goblin that likes to run out there and knock the football off the tee has once again done it. Michael Green to reset it. Back deep, Emory Jones and Bo Whitmire for the Braves. The last year that Valdosta State will be playing the Braves because next year they could be the Patriots, they could be the Red Hawks, or they could be the Power. High driving kick, Whitmire fights the sun to catch it. Bring it around to the right side at the 20. Whitmire knocked out of bounds. Eric Williams kind of backed into him. A hip check from Eric Williams to take Whitmire out of bounds. Bryce, you just mentioned the fact that as we, as we have an injured Blazer on the field, it looks like it is Michael Terry, the freshman running back from America's Georgia. You just mentioned the fact that West Georgia is having to scrap their nickname of Braves. That is because of the new NCAA sanction affecting all levels of college competition about Native American nicknames having to be scratched because of the bias towards them. And the only schools that I've heard of allowing to keep their Native American nickname have been Florida State with the Seminoles and Central Michigan with the Chippewas. But West Georgia will have a new nickname when we see them next year in Carrollton. Michael Terry still down on the ground. And it is that time of year again, it's flu season. South Georgia Medical Center will host their annual drive through Flu Shot Clinic on Tuesday, November 15th at Morningside Baptist Church from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The cost of the vaccine is $15. For more information, call 333-1610. That's 333-1610, extension 5. As Terry, probably feeling a little bit better than some of the people that have the flu, walks off the field. Touche, Bryce. Now let's see here if the Blazers can manage to stop because we've seen it all throughout this game. Blazers turnovers, West Georgia scores. They haven't turned the ball over, so we'll see if the Blazers can come up with a big stop here. Yenser with Taylor in the backfield. Play action, Yenser as the pocket closed around him. Pass is ruled complete. But there is a flag on the play in the air that looks like offensive holding. Johnny Williams apparently caught the ball. We'll see here. Yenser set the throw. Oh, and you can't see. It's tough to tell. It looks like he might have caught it, but the flag goes against West Georgia. Personal foul, 15-yard face mask. So that helps out the Blazers. That'll be half the distance to the goal, and that's what the Blazers need to do. Pin West Georgia deep. See if they can force a turnover of their own. Because the, guilt, the guilty party on that one is Joe Fowler. He's 6'5", 313 pounds from Gray, Georgia. A nasty looking fellow. And this offensive line for West Georgia is very large. For as many sacks as they've given up, they have the size. But like we've said about before, they're not a, very, they're not a team that likes to drop back and pass. They run the ball a lot, which means the quarterback doesn't have time to throw it as much as, say, a Barrett Wilkes or a Scott Eister or a Vinnie Saylor. But this is a huge, huge opportunity for the Blazer Black Swarm to come up big. First and 21 from the West Georgia 12 for the Braves, leading 17 to 6. Handoff, Taylor, met by LaVar Stoller, Kelvin Roberts. And Steve Batros. We saw how quick the Blazer defense is on that play. They were able, they recognized the hole and they just collapsed it. You saw what Steve, Steve Bet Betros did. You saw what Lavaris Dollar did, the freshman. As we see, one, two, three Blazers come around on that, on that hit. And if the Blazers can manage to come up big like that, we should see the ball back again. Well, we will, without a doubt, in this game. but. No gain, second and 21 still. Five minutes, 46 and counting here in the third. Yenser. Play action, set the throw. He's got a man, it's Emory Jones. Pass is complete. Sean Harris tried to strip it. They'll mark him down very close, just a yard shy of the first down. A 20-yard reception from Emory Jones and Brett Yenser. 
The Blazers are biting on this play action because of the ability of West Georgia of their running game. As we mentioned, Sean Harris was behind coverage there, and that, al that allowed Brett Yesner the time to make a good pass. That's a huge third down and one play for the Blazers at the 32-yard line. Foss showing blitz, handoff, Javari Taylor, he's got it. Enough for the first down as Taylor gets out close to the 35. And West Georgia continues to roll on the clock and roll the first downs. That's what I was just about to mention, Bryce. We haven't discussed the fact all day that because West Georgia is a power running team, they use up clock. And that is one of the things that as we get down to the latter part of this third quarter, entering the fourth quarter, will be huge for the Blazers to stop because they need time to score themselves and if West Georgia keeps on using it, it's not going to be a good situation for BSU to be in. Toss. Taylor wrapped up. A gain of one as Tim Thompson came from behind and wrapped up Javari Taylor as he tried to counter back to his left. Simple toss play to the near side of the screen. There you see Big Tim Thomas just saying, you know what, I've had the peach basket three straight years. I'm not about to, to get it taken away from me now, a along with a Gulf South Conference championship. Second down and eight to go for West George, under four minutes. They're on top, leading by 11. Play action. Yenser to throw. He overthrew Emory Jones. Bernard George on the coverage along with Everett Kitchens. On that play, you can see how the Braves passing attack really is. They've only thrown the ball for about 200 attempts this year. And the timing just isn't there. But now, again, Bryce, we come up with another huge third down for the Blazer Black Swarm. Third and eight from the... West Georgia 37 yard line and out of the shotgun come the Braves. Price and Holbrook to the far side. Emory Jones to the near side. Yenser to throw, he's got a man. Complete first down and a little bit more. That'll be 12 yard reception to the 49 as Rafini Gonzalez made the play. West Georgia just seems to know what to do when put in pressure situations. And unlike VSU, they are executing with ease. This West Georgia team, not that the talent is comparable, but the play calling seems eerily similar to NFL style play calling. They go shotgun on third down for first and second. They run it in the I formation, just a couple receivers, not conventional to the Gulf South Conference. Very non-traditional. Yenser hands it off. Taylor to the outside, cut back. Good play. And a little bit of pushing and shoving by Michael Cullen. But Antoine Harris made the play a gain of two. The second and eight. A simple halfback carry here. Tim Thompson almost had him in the backfield. As you look there, Antoine Harris almost stripped the ball away from Javari Taylor. But the Blazers seem just to over pursue and miss tackles. And as a result, West Georgia gets positive yards. Under three minutes in motion, Holbrook. Yenser looking that way, tipped. It either came out of Yenser's hand wrong or it was tipped by Calvin English. Intended for Brian Davis, the fullback. Brings up third down and eight for the Braves at the Valdosta 49 yard line. Braves so far have been either two for two or three for three on this drive in third downs and the Blazers need a stop. They need to get the ball back to put more points on this scoreboard and pressure the Braves. Clock stopped at 10, under, 10 seconds under three minutes. Another good save. Whistle on the play as there was something on the field. One of the VSU coaches ran out there and tossed it to the side. 
And that will reset the play clock. And Yenser will be able to call another play. Big third, third down. down. Seven yards to go. Three receivers set once again for the Braves. VSU showing blitz, now backs off. Yenser overthrows his man. Intended for Gonzalez. And West Georgia, after sucking up a lot of time, will punt this one away. Had he made the catch anyway, Bryce, I'm not sure that Rafini Gonzalez would have had the first down anyway. But great stop by the Blazers. Hopefully managed to get the crowd in this game. Hopefully managed to get themselves back in the game now too. New punt returner as Tyler Arendt has stepped back there. Bernard George not looking very confident. Carpenter to kick it away for West Georgia. Here come the Blazers. A high spiraling kick. Arendt fields it, misses one tackle. Tyler Arendt around the corner to the 20, to the 30. It's only West Georgia Braves. Gets out to the 35 yard line. A good return for Tyler Arendt. There's a flag on the play though as Latrey Walker Holbrook for West Georgia. Might have been blocked in the back. This one could be coming back. Valdosta State after a good return from Tyler Arendt. And it could be coming back in a big way, Bryce, because that flag, if I see correctly, is inside the 10 yard line, which means stupid calls and just right there, Travis Taylor. You're not gonna get away with blocking a receiver in the back, especially with a referee right there. Tyler Arendt, though, a good job spinning up field and turning the corner. So the penalty was at the six yard line, which means the Blazers are gonna find themselves 97 yards away from a touchdown with just over two and a half minutes to go in the, in the third quarter, 17 to six, West Georgia. But first and 10, Valdosta State on their three. Spread offense, Reynolds, Taylor to the near side. Tharp, Parker to the far side. Barrett Wilkes in the shadow of his own goalpost. Hand off, there's a flag. Could be a false start on Valdosta State. They tried to blow that play dead. This will bring it even closer to our end zone at the one and a half yard line. Blazers with penalties and with turnovers. Usually they're able to get around these things to come up with big plays to counter off of this. But with a West Georgia defense playing like they are and with a BSU offense playing like, playing like they are, Blazers are gonna have to come up with some big late game heroics if they hope to win this. Game clock being reset to two minutes and 31 seconds. This one on the one and a half yard line of Valdosta State. They're in the shadow of the scoreboard, the goalpost. You can see the cheerleaders. This is a long, long drive. I think I attempt. see my mom over there too. High formation, VSU. Handoff, Brown. And he is stuffed and it's a safety. Vincent Brown stuffed on the goal line. The offensive line could not hold off the charging West Georgia Braves and is now 19 to six, a 13 point edge. And West Georgia gets the ball back. Things not going VSU's way. I don't know what else to say except for the fact that on the kickoff that should have been presented to the Blazers at the 37 yard line, instead it was about, you know, a 34 yard difference because of an illegal block in the back penalty. There's nothing we can do up here sitting in the booth to change what's going on here, Bryce. I wish I was out there in pads telling my Blazers to shape up or face the fact that you might have to be playing next week. Two minutes, 25 seconds remaining. 13 points, not an insurmountable mountain, but 13 points against this West Georgia defense just seems so massive, especially with the futility of the Blazer offense so far on the day. When a Blazer offense has scored an average of about 
35 points per game. And you're lit, sitting here looking at six with two minutes to go in the third quarter. You know it's a combination of a defensive battle, of a defense against the Blazers, and the Blazers just not calling very good plays or executing those called plays. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Hatcher light a fire to see what he can get going. Tidwell getting the, re the directions from the referee. Channing Price and Bo Whitmore back at the 25 yard line. Tidwell gonna try to get a boot into one. VSU needs something desperately to go their way. Four turnovers, down 13 points, a safety allowed. Kick taken inside the 30. Price across the 35 to the 37, and that's where West Georgia's offense, who was just stymied by VSU, will take over. I wouldn't call it stymied, Bryce. They got two third down conversions and were able to melt off about five to six minutes worth of clock. And if they do that again and the Blazers get it back with, you know, 11, 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, they have to score in a hurry and then play defense and then score in a hurry again. Here comes the West Georgia offense. Black Swarm defense could desperately use a turnover. Yenser, delayed handoff, row, up to the 40. Gain of three. And now the Braves are just gonna be content with taking their dear sweet time, getting back to the line of scrimmage and melting time off that clock. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. Blazers find themselves down to the Braves, 19 to six as we see Coach Anders barking out instructions for his Black Swarm to say, come up big, give me a turnover. Second and six. Yenser to throw, overthrows his man, Emory Jones. And he had Emory Jones too. It wasn't like he was covered. Emory Jones is about three to four inches taller than what the Blazers defense had going against him. And again, you see the Blazers, not the Blazers, the Braves passing moves. Aside from that one big play of that 58 yard reception in the first quarter, the Braves pass game has been held in check here. Big third down stop needed by Valdosta State in the Black Swarm. Yenser throwing, sacked. Lavaris Dollar, the true freshman from Dublin, Georgia, gets great penetration on the blitz and takes down Brett Yenser. That's what we need. A giant sack. That's what we need. Lavaris Dollar coming through, just pulling his way through. It looked like Javari Taylor was set up to block that. And I feel proud to say that Lavaris Dollar, he's in my sociology class. I feel proud to say that right now. But the Blazer Black Swarm coming up big, getting a defensive stop when they need to forcing a Braves punt, and hopefully this time, the Blazers won't have a block in the back call. Carpenter to kick it away. It's way back there. Arendt nearly fielded over his head. He's got a lot of red to beat if he wants to try to move up field. Looking for Sherrard Reynolds block, another flag. This one looks like it's gonna be on Michael Flood. Arendt gets to the 25. VSU just continually hurting themselves with the yellow. And Bryce, we're, we've said this a thousand times today, it's not the defense. The defense is doing a remarkable job of shutting down this West Georgia offense. It's our offense against their defense, our brains against their brains. And right now, as hard as it is for me to say this, it looks like West Georgia is smarter than us right now. 10-yard penalty, block in the back once again. And with 44.7 seconds, Barrett Wilkes comes into this game. And if you're going to be a Gulf South Conference champion, you got to come back from 13 in the next 15 minutes and 45 seconds. We've seen something like that happen before with the Blazers, but they haven't faced Kelvin Morris and the likes of his wrecking crew on defense. 
Three receivers, Vincent Brown in the backfield. It's a reverse, Sherrard Reynolds looking for blockers. He throws it, it's Derek Tharp, incomplete. A sign of desperation from Valdosta State. They tried to go for the big play. Reynolds threw it out there. Derek Tharp just couldn't haul it in. He laid out to try to get it. But VSU pulling out all the stops and maybe a team with their back against the wall. Their back is literally against the wall when they're inside their own territory. Sherrod Reynolds surprises the entire team, including us, but just doesn't manage to put it in there for even the lanky Derek start to come up with the catch second and 10 for the Blazers at their own 13 yard line Travis Taylor in motion Wilkes Odell Willis chasing him down flag on the play plus a sack Joss Edison seems to be limping the left tackle who's replaced Will Shelton and everything just going completely haywire for Valdosta State right now. I thought that with the Blazers taking on a team like a North Alabama, like a Central Arkansas, that they would see what a good defense is. Obviously, it's very apparent to me, the Blazers have no idea how to block, how to think, how to even execute the simplest of plays and it's leading to a third down and 20 from, guess where? The three yard line. Once again, VSU way back in their own territory. Under 30 seconds in the third quarter. Down 13, it's third and 23, and a free play. Another interception, it won't matter. It'll be a five yard penalty. Sherrard Reynolds getting up slowly as Larico Stevenson picked that one off. How can this West Georgia team not be in contention for at least a Gulf South Conference title? This defense against one of the league's best offenses is just shutting us down. And to think about that they're six and two in conference, they've lost to North Alabama and I believe to Central Arkansas. And Arkansas Tech. Oh, North, North Alabama and Arkansas Tech. They haven't played Central Arkansas. But they are so efficient. How can they be on the inside of the Division II National Playoffs looking in? That's, a, that's bewildering to me. Three receivers to the far side. Reynolds all alone to the near side. Third down and 16. Here's Willis again sacked. They'll mark it at the one, Bear Wilkes' helmet came off. Odell Willis just extremely quick on the push. Time will run out here in the third quarter and Travis Tidwell will have to punt from the back of the end zone. VSU completely against the bricks. West Georgia on top of this one by 13. We've got the fourth quarter coming up right here on VSU TV. Following the tragic events of September 11th, there have been hundreds of violent attacks against innocent Americans. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. Remember, please stop the hate. We're stronger when we are united. Remember. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty. And justice. For all. In America, there's either room for everyone or it's not America. Don't pick the wrong fight. Let's keep America land of the free. Stop the hate. Back on VSU TV here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium and the scene is grim for Blazer fans as they're down 13 points. Valdosta State to arch rival West Georgia, 19 to six. Here's the kick from Tidwell, it's a pretty good one. Channing Price to field it at the 49. Price has got some room, Price all the way to the 30, to the inside the 20. Blocking the back call. That's what I was looking at about the referees as there was a referee right where I thought Scott Palmer got blocked in the back. And when BSU is getting all of the negative breaks to them and when West Georgia is getting all the positive breaks to them. Well, West Georgia has created their own breaks. Yes, they have. Four turnovers from Valdosta State, not a single turnover from Brett Genser. 
Javari Taylor and this West Georgia team. They'll take over on the Blazer 21 after a great punt return from Channing Price. The fact of the matter is, so far through three quarters of play, West Georgia has been the better football team, With, and honestly, by far. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yenser. Handoff. Taylor. Less than a yard gain. It'll be second down in around nine. Blazer fans silent. Carlos Russell trying to pump up the crowd. While West Georgia fans are just having the time of their life. High formation, Holbrook to the near side. Emory Jones to the far side. A lot of height out there on the receiving core. Yenser to throw. He's thinking end zone. Bernard George trying to chase it down for an interception. Third down and 10 coming up for West Georgia. If we could force West Georgia to pass all the time, that'd be good. That'd be very good. But unfortunately, that's not the case. As the Braves find themselves in a third down and 10 to go on the 21-yard line of the Blazers, and even with the Blazer stop here and a West Georgia field goal, that makes it a 22-6 to six ball game. But we got to worry about stopping this third down play first. Price, Holbrook to the near side, Jones to the far side. Blazers showing blitz. Yenser stepping up. Now he tries to run, not enough for the first down, brought down by Tim Thompson at the 19. They'll mark him at the 18. And that's where Adi Berkic will come in and attempt a field goal. With the carry. And you saw that when Brett Yesner was forced out of the pocket, what was the one thing he did? He held on to the ball with two hands. And when you do that, you are going to prevent fumbles. Here's the field goal attempt from Berkic. The punt, the kick is low. It's a low liner, but it is good. And that puts West Georgia on top 22 to six with 13 minutes, 18 seconds remaining here in the fourth and final quarter of play. I'm just looking at, at the stats here of the third quarter, Bryce, and as much as I hate it, you know, those four turnovers, like I've said before, they killed us. Because you look, Vincent Brown has more rushing yards than Javari Taylor. Barrett Wilkes, he's trailing Brett Yesner with yards compared. But you look at, you know, the big comparison. Brett Yesner has no interceptions. Barrett Wilkes has two. And West Georgia has no fumbles. And VSU has one. And two. They fumbled on the punt return. That's right. So four, two and two. So if the Blazers are going to have to make any sort of comeback here, Bryce, it's going to have to be quick and then hope for a defensive stand like the defense has been able to do. That This drive right here might be the most important drive of the game. Granted, there's still 13, 18, and a lot of football time left. But with the ability of West Georgia to get first downs through the ground and just chew up clock, Valdosta State has got to find a way to put some pressure on them. And if they're, West Georgia takes the ball back without VSU having put any points on the board, but necessarily a touchdown, there's no pressure on the West Georgia offense. Adi Berkic, or excuse me, Jeff Carpenter to kick this one away. Back deep, Sherard Reynolds. Flag on the play, delay a game. It was a pooch kick anyway by Carpenter as he just lined it downfield. It'll be a delay a game, they'll move back five yards and kick it from the 30. Sherrard Reynolds waiting his turn. Kick return for a touchdown would be nice. That would be very nice. Do I think it's gonna happen? We'll see. I was going to mention what I predicted the score of this game to be before the game, but 
now that I see what it is right now, I'm glad I didn't say it. Here's Carpenter's kick. It's a dribbler to Jeffrey Felton. He picks it up, looking to go around the left side, trying to pick up blocks. Felton up the middle. Felton to the 40, to the 50. No flags. No flags. They'll mark him out of bounds. There is a flag after the play. Could be a personal foul call on West Georgia. They'll mark him out at the 45. There is a flag on the play. But a late, late flag. You saw Jeffrey Felton. Usually you don't like to run from side to side. You like to run from north to south. But in this case, they allow the blockers to come up and to find the men to block. And good call here. Finally, the referees are getting some calls against us, or for us, as it, as it is an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Braves, which gives the Blazers excellent field position at the 30. Let's see if the Blazers can take this momentum that has been provided by them and execute and score points. 13 minutes, 10 seconds, VSU down 22 to six. Unable to score a touchdown so far on the day. The co Goal South Conference Championship on the line. Central Arkansas has already won a share. If VSU can somehow pull out a miraculous victory against our arch rival, they'll also win a share of the GSC Championship. Wilkes to throw. Reynolds gets four. Barrett Wilkes was absolutely drilled on that play, but he managed Luckily for us, he managed to get the ball away. Look at this receiver all the way. And look who it is who hits him. Oh, wow. Some dude named Kelvin Morris. Have you heard of him before? Just a couple of times. Yes. Wilkes. Up in the pocket. Throws. He's got to manage Travis Taylor. Taylor inside the 15. They'll mark him out at the 13. First down, Valdosta State. Again, West Georgia defenseman on that play fell down. Barrett Wilkes barking out instructions, trying to get his team up to the line of scrimmage quick to go against his Western defense. It seemed like the first play or the first drive they had in the second half when they scored their, their field goal, they were no huddle. Under 12 and a half remaining in the game. Wilkes throws. Parker out of bounds at the 10, gain of two. He managed to get out of bounds, though. Stops the clock at 12.19 to go in the fourth quarter. We're sensing a change of momentum here, just a little bit. If the Blazers can put some points on the board, Barrett Wilkes throwing a pass to Zach Parker, steps out of bounds, almost attacks some West Georgia cheerleaders. Wilkes in the no huddle. Callaway, Taylor, Parker to the near side. Sherrard Reynolds with Larico Stevenson on him to the far side. Shovel pass, Vincent Brown's got room to run. Touchdown, Blazers. Shovel pass beats the over aggressive West Georgia defense. They've got a man down, but it's a touchdown. VSU, Vincent Brown scoots it in, and they're finally on the board with six points and a man down for West Georgia. It looks like VSU is going to go for two. We saw on that replay there, Vincent Brown making the good adjustment, always being there near Barrett Wilkes, and he took the shovel pass. That was great play call in there by Coach, by coach uh, Dean and Coach Hatcher to realize this aggressive West Georgia defense might over-pursue a little bit, and they did, and the Blazers capitalized. Man down was Damian Green, a junior from Kingsland, Georgia, defensive tackle. Valdosta State, though, keeps the offense out there, and it looks like they're going to try to go 4-2, and let's see if they use the play. They've used this before, where the man from the near side, from the far side of the field goes in motion, and they throw because they just moved it all the way over to the left hash mark. We'll see if Sherrard Reynolds goes in motion here, try to create some confusion by West Georgia. 12-14, Blazers have punched one in for the first time today. A two-point conversion would cut it to eight. In motion was Clay Calloway. Wilkes. Throws over the middle, incomplete. He threw it behind Sherrard Reynolds, pass incomplete, and it's a 10-point game. Still, though, two possessions. 
Let's keeps go. the game within two possessions and a big momentum swing for VSU to finally punch one in the end zone. Price, I'm looking a whole lot more comfortable at this scoreboard instead of 22 to nine or 22 to six, I see 22 to 12. And you saw the Blazers able to move the ball down the field. Without turnovers, the Blazers score. Can you believe that? It's an hypothesis I just created right now. So the Blazers now have put pressure on West Georgia to come out and take time off the clock. If the Blazer defense can, can, come, can come up and step up big, we might have a better chance. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity presents A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Wednesday, November 9th from noon to 4 p.m. Learn how voting machines operate, see local politicians as they discuss voters, voter issues, and the recent passing of Miss Rosa Parks, and a DJ will spin the latest tunes. That's A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, November 9th from noon to 4 p.m. at the University Center. Still plenty of time in this game, Bryce. Just over 12 minutes to go in the it's fourth quarter. It's an eternity, quarter. an eternity in the game of football. And VSU fans got a little bit more hop in their step. Some of the fans on the far side cheering. I can run a mile, Bryce. And that's saying something for me. Still 10 points coming back on a West Georgia team that is ball control offense. The defense must step it up here. Michael Green to kick it away. And it's onside kick. And it's recovered. There's a flag on the play. It's probably going to be an offside. Big recovery by West Georgia. There's a flag. It's going to be offsides on VSU. That will be declined. And West Georgia takes over with great field position. So a gutsy call by Coach Hatcher, but the kick popped up too high in the air. And you, you, you tend to think that West Georgia was looking for that after what VSU has done against Southern Arkansas, what they did against UNA, what they did against Delta State. So the Blazer defense. Blazer defense is going to have to come up big here now, Bryce. So that onside kick failure puts a lot of pressure on Valdosta State in this Black Swarm defense. Defense trying to get the crowd involved, and right now, the Blazers find the Braves out of field goal position. So if we can manage to keep that going, and keep them out of scoring, that's even better. Ball on the 41. Holbrook in motion. Handoff, Stan Rowe hit hard in the backfield, loss of five. Geo, Mr. Blaylock with a great, great look there. Managed to find his way through the zone, through the offensive line, and stuff West Georgia with a loss. And Bryce is beginning to feel like BSU is in West Georgia's head. They've won the past, past five meetings. And the crowd is up, Bryce. One receiver to the far side, two to the near, including Channing Price and Jabriel Holbrook in the slot. Blazer showing blitz. Yenser set the throw. Tim Thompson had a hand on Yenser. Passes incomplete. Great coverage on the blitz by Valdosta State. Tim Thompson nearly had him in the backfield. Third down and 14. The linebackers blitz. It creates holes in the defense, and the Blazer Black Swarm managed to cover those holes cover those holes with effectiveness and now this crowd is into it Bryce they want this rivalry game to come to VSU with a third down and 14 on the VSU 45 yard line West Georgia finds themselves in a situation where they have succeeded in the past third and long three receivers Yenser hands it off tackled backfield Stan Rowe nothing doing and West Georgia will have to punt and you feel the momentum even further in VSU's corner. Right there, boom. And instead of going for the torso and for the hips, where does VSU go? Wrap up them legs. Wrap up them legs. Without those legs, Bryce, it's hard to move. Carpenters had a busy day punting. 10.52 and ticking away, lots of time for VSU to try to stage a comeback. 
Nearly blocked. Carpenter once again goes down. It takes a West Georgia hop, but too far as Odell Willis could not chase it down in the end zone, and Valdosta State will take over on their own 20-yard line after putting together a touchdown drive their last time out. I don't think you try anything different, Bryce. You managed to get the ball back. You managed to have West Georgia melt only a minute and 45 seconds off of that clock. And you come out and you throw the ball, you mix in screens, and maybe, just maybe, BSU will find themselves down by even less than 10. Two receivers to the far side, Sherrod Reynolds and Travis Taylor to the near side, Clay Calloway. Wilkes rolling to his left, fires, finds Reynolds. Up to the 28. Gain of eight, second down and two on the way for the Valdosta State offense. Clock stops at 10.33. Barrett takes the snap, rolls to his left, delivers a nice pass on the run to Sherrod Reynolds, who, like we've said before, is the new go-to guy for this system. Four receivers set, two to the far side, two to the near, including Zach Parker. Quick pass, incomplete. Barrett Wilkes had Brendan Jamison closing in on him quickly, tried to get rid of it, and threw it incomplete. Third down and two now. Big third down conversion here for Valdosta State. Now, if you're VSU, Bryce, you pretty much can do anything. You can run the ball. I mean, granted, v West Georgia has a good defense, but two yards is two yards on any team. West Georgia has brought about 200 fans. They're trying to make some noise now. Perkins showing blitz. Wilkes changing the play call. Play clock at two. Snap. Over the middle, caught. First down, stripped. And I think Zach Parker might have gotten it back. He was close to dropping that ball. My heart jumped up to my eyes right there. Oh, he got lucky, Bryce. Did he get that ball back? He did, because that was indeed a fumble. He did lose the ball before, his, before he was marked down by the ground. Nonetheless, first down, 10 minutes, 15 seconds, ball spotted at the 35. Wilkes. Lots of time, finds Travis Taylor, hit hard by Perkins, but a gain of four. Positive yards, moves those chains. Just under 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. West Georgia up 22 to 12, but Valdosta State moving the ball effectively. No huddle offense. Barrett Wilkes looking through all of his receivers, finds Travis Taylor open along the near side. Wilkes, shovel pass, Vincent Brown, some room to run up to the 41. Thought he might have had a bigger hole than he did. Brown gets to the 41. It'll be third down and four for VSU to try to get a first. This game is what I love to see, Bryce. Rivalries, passion, football. Two receivers to the far side, Aaron and Tharp. To the near side, Parker and Callaway in the backfield. It's Vincent Brown, and in the shotgun, it's Barrett Wilkes. Wilkes over the middle. He's Park, got Parker. First down. Hold on to the ball, Zach. He does as he crosses to the 46. First down, Valdosta State. They continue to move the chains just under nine minutes now. Blazers down by 10. Blazers might need to start moving the ball a little bit faster because they're using up clock two, and West Georgia is going to use up clock two as Barrett Wilkes delivers a pass to Zach Parker. Should have just kept on running north, east, west instead of north, south there, Bryce. Quick pass out, screen pass, Tyler Aron. Gets to the 49, gain of three. Do you try, maybe, to have a deep, deep pass through? Well, right now, West Georgia is dropping back into serious zone coverage deep, trying to take away that deep ball and forcing VSU, if they're going to score, to have about a 15-play drive and short dink and dunk passes. VSU will take it, though. Still a lot of time left. Wilkes throwing with a man in his face. He finds Aaron. 
to the 30, spins away to the 25 inside. They'll mark him out at the 23-yard line, a huge gain from Tyler Arn. And once again, Lorico Stevenson falls down for West Georgia. Big first down, Blazers. I mean, Barrett Wilkes is given time. They're giving him time in the pocket against this West Georgia defense. He takes a hit there, but finds Tyler Arndt wide open. And Lorico, not only, not only does he fall down, but he misses a tackle there that gives Tyler five extra yards. Ball on the 22. Handoff, William Milton. Good gain, maybe four, as he gets to the 16. Down to eight minutes to go in the ball game, Bryce. VSU moving the ball extremely effectively here. West George's defensive coordinator barking out instructions saying, hold them, hold them, while we're saying, score a touchdown. Second down and five. 7.44 left in this one. Wilkes sacked once again. Odell Willis for the fourth time sacks Barrett Wilkes back at the 25. Big loss on that one. It'll be third down and 13. Right there, he beats Gerald Davis to the inside. And with the trio of Odell, Kelvin, and John, this defense is something. And as now the Blazers face a huge down, as the clock is ticking, seven minutes, minutes, 10 seconds to go in the ball game, third and 13 on the West George at 30, 25 yard line. Wilkes, here comes the blitz, sacked again. Gerald Davis beat twice in a row, and I believe it was Willis again, and that sack pushes the Blazers almost, it looks like way out, of Michael Green's field goal territory. They're gonna try it, Bryce. Here comes Michael Green. They're gonna try a 52, 53 yard field goal and he needs to convert here. West Georgia not sure if this is for real. They're lining up like they think it's gonna be a fake. Michael Green set to kick, it's a bad snap. There's distance, it's good! Michael Green drills a 52 yarder with room to spare, 6-12, and this is now a seven point game, 22-15. The Blazers get a huge field goal, the momentum continually going in the flame red and black way. When Odell Thurman had those back-to-back -back sacks, I was afraid because Odell Thurman had beaten a good offensive lineman and Gerald Davis twice. But Michael Green came up big. Now the Blazers are down by seven. Six minutes to go, they need a stop here. All three timeouts left for Valdosta State. Odell Willis though, having an unbelievable day. But VSU still in the face of adversity, Michael Green kicks a 52 yard bomb. And now Valdosta State in the special teams unit they tried an onside kick last time, but I think they'll probably boot this one away. You don't know that, Bryce. No, you can never tell with Coach Hatcher. And that's one thing that West Georgia's got to be thinking about is last time, and they do, they put some more guys here up on the front line. Last time, VSU tried an onside kick when they were down 10. Who knows if they'll try it when they're down seven. The confidence starting to brim from the Blazers. A team nine and one on the regular season and not willing to give up the conference championship so easily. They're gonna make West Georgia fight. It's a boot. Oh, pretty kick. Emory Jones in the end zone, he's gonna take it out. Emory Jones inside the 10, taken down at the six and a flag on the play as well. Let's see who the flag is on, Bryce. Great tackling by Valdosta Looks State. Looks like on it's the on West teams. Georgia, Bryce. It's on the Braves. Ball spotted just over the seven yard line. And the flag will likely push West Georgia back even further. Referee is conferring here, trying to figure out what the penalty is. And Tim Thompson is saying, push him back, push, push him, him back. back. Six minutes, seven seconds, Blazers down seven, 22 to 15. 
out comes Brett Yenser. The guilty party on that Kelvin Farrell, a freshman tight end from St. Mary's, Georgia. This one now inside the five. Now all the breaks seem to be going the issue ways, Bryce. This crowd is up. This crowd is eager. And West Georgia's fans are stunned, but they still hold the lead. Six minutes, seven seconds. A whole lot of time for anything to happen in this game. Yenser in the eye formation. Daniel showing blitz. Now he backs off. Handoff, Taylor taken down. Close to the line of scrimmage, he might have gotten one. Might have gotten two. Looks like the line of scrimmage will be at the five yard line. Second down and nine, under six minutes now. If you're the Braves and you have a seven point lead with less than six minutes to go, do you try and pass the ball? Not until you have to. If you can get first downs by running the ball, you continue to run the ball, but sometimes the anxiety gets to coaches and they want to try to get an early first down. Yenser, he's throwing. Passes incomplete out of the reach of Jay Holbrook. Clock stopped at 526 and now it's third and nine and it looked like the coach got a little happy. Obviously, we ju you just finished saying they're trying to get first downs too early and now third down and nine. At the, blade, at the West Georgia five yard line, this crowd is going to be loud and it's a decent sized crowd, Bryce. Got a lot of fans here on the visitor side as well, trying to get in the heads of the West Georgia players. 526, a huge third down conversion attempt by West Georgia. Handoff, Taylor, nothing doing. Taken down by Dedrick Morrison. A giant tackle from the senior. And now West Georgia will punt this one away. And now if you're VSU, you definitely go for the block. Well, if you go for the block, you may not be return guaranteed a good return, but Tyler Aron has had some good returns on the day. A block here would be very convenient, but Maybe a return just as good. You only need one touchdown to tie this puppy up. Carpenter. Punts it. Arendt drops it and kneels on it. Probably a smart play. He didn't field it cleanly, so he decided to sit on it at the 41. Great field position for VSU. And now, with four minutes, 36 seconds, the offense comes onto the field with a chance to tie this game up since the first time it was 0-0 to start the game. And we never would have said this at the beginning of this quarter, but it just goes to show how resilient this Blazer team is. At the beginning, we were like, man, we look bad. And I was saying, man, we look really good. Aaron to the far side, Felton in the near side slot along with Tharp. Handoff, no, play action. Wilkes finds Scott Palmer. Gain of eight as I he gets to the to the 32. I love him. Pain train. How many times do you see Scott Palmer catch a pass in a game? Never. But if you see here, he comes out of the backfield. He was blocked for a minute, but then when Barrett Wilkes moved up in the pocket, that pressure came up to try and put pressure on Barrett, leaving Scott Palmer wide open. Four minutes, four seconds, no huddle. For Valdosta State, the pain train stays in. Vincent Brown in the game. Tharp and Arnt to the far side. Jeffrey Felton to the near side. Wilkes, handoff, delayed, and grabbed. Good play by number 71 of West Georgia. He's not listed on their depth chart. One of many players not listed, but he's playing. Brings up now a third down and four, third down and five for the Blazers. Three and a half minutes to go, obviously, in four down territory. Are into the far side. Tharp, suspiciously vacant, is Sherrard Reynolds. Big third down for the Blazers. Here's the snap. Wilkes steps up, fires, and it's picked off. And Breon Ford is going to go the distance to the 20, 10, 5, and that 
is a huge play for West Georgia. Barrett Wilkes completely gave that pass away to Tyler Arendt and a giant touchdown. Still time, three minutes and two seconds, but West Georgia now jumps on top, 28 to 15. Barrett Wilkes was under pressure. Gerald Davis still couldn't maintain Odell and that should have been pass interference. Oh my heavens, what in the world is that referee crew thinking? Sorry for being so nasty in comments, but goodness gracious alive, when you hit a receiver before he gets the ball, that is pass interference. This referee crew has blown another call, and this time it might end up losing. It might end up costing Valasi State a chance at a first round bye or a Nash or a Gulf South championship because with just over three minutes to go, the score is now 29 to 15, West Georgia. Three minutes, two seconds left in this one. Blazers down 14, and the fans for VSU starting to file out of this one. The air has been let out of this building, except for the West Georgia fans who can smell a victory and smell for the first time fresh peaches. But you're not going to get all the calls to go your way, Bryce. And it's very evident. You can't complain about calls with five turnovers. I mean, that's just the nature of the game. Five turnovers, three interceptions from Barrett Wilkes. He also fumbled a fumbled punt by Bernard George. I mean, just costly errors. And every single one of those turnovers has resulted in points for West Georgia. Yeah. Three turnovers have led to touchdowns, and then two have just helped to wind clock down for West Georgia. Aki Burkich to kick it away. Vincent Brown, the special weapon, back deep. Pulling out all the stops, VSU. Travis Taylor trying to fire up his team. Kick return for a touchdown right here would be just what the doctor ordered. That would. But they're they probably going to squib it. Palmer. A pretty good return out to the 45. And there's still time, Bryce. Three minutes to go in the game, but it, it's just now definitely in the hands of West Georgia to lose. So the comeback. Halted by the Breon Ford interception return for a touchdown that should not have been made. Tharp, Parker to the near side, to the far side, Taylor and Sherrard Reynolds. Wilkes, your quarterback, Vincent Brown in the backfield. Open is Travis Taylor, makes a man miss to the 50, gets out of bounds at the 45. Gain of eight. If the Blazers can manage to score before two minutes are up, they will definitely have to try an onside kick. But they still have all three timeouts left. We've seen weirder things happen in the world of college football before. Reynolds to the far side, Tharp to the near side. Wilkes. Overthrows Vincent Brown, but he cuts up field inside the 40. Stays in bounds. Vincent Brown trying to fire up his team. Clock will continue to roll after the first down marker is set. Two minutes, 41. Barrett Wilkes having time, which is very uncommon in today's ball game. Manages to find Vincent Brown, who makes an athletic one-handed grab. Manages to get some yards, as now Blazers on the roll, on the move again. Fumble, there's a penalty. Ball is loose, West Georgia picks it up.
And you can see all of the Blazers with their heads down. Leonard Shivers came up with a fumble. That is turnover number six for the Blazers, as it is another holding call on the Blazers. That one will be declined. And it'll be first down, West Georgia. And effectively, though there's still time left and anything can happen in a football game, this one seems to be all but over. So Bryce, with a loss apparently sta staring us down, do you think that we will drop below the top two seeds in the region? There's a good chance if Albany State beats Fort Valley State very handedly that VSU could drop below the number two ranking. But St. Augustine, it took two losses for them to drop out. Yenser, handoff, Javari Taylor to the 41. VSU calls their first time out. The annual Valdosta Symphony Ball will be held Saturday, November 12th at the Valdosta Country Club. This year's theme is an evening in the Amazon. For ticket information, contact Linda Mullins at 333-2150 as the Blazers take their first time out. Some other news around VSU. The Counseling Center will present effective study skills Tuesday, November 8th from 4 to 5 p.m. in the UC. That's the University Center, room three. For more information, contact Leah McMillan at 333-5940. That's the Counseling Center's effective study skills Tuesday, November 8th from 4 to 5 p.m. in the UC, room three. Leah McMillan is the person to contact at 333-5940. There's a good chance that VSU could stay in the top two, but the loss today certainly helps the cause, especially if North Carolina Central can win. Central Arkansas has a good chance of jumping up into one of those top two, being the conference champion. But VSU is well recognized and well respected around the region. And we'll see how it all have to play out, but with the final 222 here, it doesn't look like VSU is going to be able to pull this one off as arch rival West Georgia will win this game for the first time in a long time. Ball trying to be stripped, finally whistled as Javari Taylor stopped in the backfield at the 45. Another timeout taken by Valdosta State. The Museum of Television and Radio presents the Women of National Public Radio. This seminar brings together many of NPR's top female voices to discuss how the network has become a haven for female producers, anchors, and reporters. See it live Thursday, November 10th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. on VSU-TV. Well, how about Brett Genser? Came in, led the team. None of the stats have been particularly great for West Georgia, but Yenser comes in, hasn't thrown an interception. No one's fumbled the ball. They've played clean football. That's the one key point to bring up when we're talking about the way West Georgia has performed today. When you look, the talent level is obviously on Valdosta State's side. But West Georgia came in here and said, regardless of talent, we're going to win by play calling. We're going to win by ball control. And we're going to win by having these things called hands, and we're going to collapse on this thing called a football, and we're going to prevent it from getting out of our torsos. Very generic terms here, Bryce, but I'm trying to stress it because when you look at the stats, I mean, six to nothing, right now on turnovers alone, West Georgia wins this ball game. Yenser on third down. Play action. Thought about throwing back. Yenser to the outside. Tackled by Gio Blaylock at the 48. And Valdosta State will take its third and final timeout with two minutes and 10 seconds. So they shut him down. And you never know what can happen. Yenser and 
West Georgia were unable to get a first down. They'll have to punt this one away. And if you do get some sort of punt return for a touchdown, anything can happen. We'll be back on VSU TV with the final two minutes and 10 seconds of the Peach Basket finale. I'm Gary Sinise. In the movie Forrest Gump, I played Lieutenant Dan Taylor, a disabled veteran. But being a disabled vet is much more difficult. It often means a life of hardship, loneliness, and pain. You can help by volunteering at your local veterans hospital. You will brighten a disabled veteran's spirit and remember those who've sacrificed for our freedom. So please get involved and contact the disabled American veterans. Back on VSU TV, Jeff Carpenter set to punt for what seems like the 4,000th time today. But West Georgia's put up 29 points, including a touchdown on defense, a line drive kick. Tyler Arendt will let it roll, and West Georgia will down it inside the 10 with a minute 59 remaining. And here comes the VSU offense. Tucker Pruitt coming in to lead the Blazers. Aside from those two scoring drives in the fourth quarter, Bryce, this offense has been as stale as a piece of bread. And I hate having to use analogies like that because I love bread. But what, what's your favorite kind of bread? French, like right out of the oven, French bread? Banana, I, I like banana bread myself. I tend to like honey wheat. Honey wheats. Good answer. Good answer. Spread formation. Tucker Pruitt in there for the Blazers. Pruitt being chased. Throws over the middle. And complete to Zach Parker. He went up and over John Perkins. Out to the 21, or excuse me, the 26. First down VSU. Clock stops with 152 remaining. Maybe a miracle from the Fitzgerald Purple Hurricane. Let's hope. That'd be incredibly nice to take it to the playoffs. Pruitt, blitz coming, rolls to his right, finds a wide open, Derek Tharp in the middle. Tharp trying to get out of bounds, gets another first down though to the 42. Clock stops with 138. Good awareness there by Tucker Pruitt, finding Derek Smith, not Derek Smith, Derek Tharp, opening throughout the middle of the field. And they've got to snap it now. Clock starts back up. Pruitt, two straight completions. Blitz coming again. He doesn't see him. Brandon Jameson rocks the redshirt freshman down at the 30. Clock continuing to roll. Now under a minute 24. Pruitt trying to organize his teammates. Second down and about 19, 22. More blitzing, delayed blitz. Avoided by Tucker Pruitt to the 30. Gets out of bounds and he stands up. Jamison, it's got something to say for him. And the rest of the West Georgia players. So Tucker Pruitt, even in the loss, stands up Brandon Jamison and talks a little smack. I think he's talking. He's probably taking a little bit of a little bit of reaction to the hit that Jamison laid on him because Pruitt was on his way out of bounds. He's probably he's probably saying to Brandon Jamison, you know what, you guys might win the peach basket, but we have a chance to win the ring. But Pruitt with a little fire late in this game. Here's the delayed blitz again, and it's Jamison. Oh. It'll be fourth down, and this game's starting to get nasty. West Georgia coming on delayed blitzes, an unbelievable time for West Georgia to be blitzing. There is no intentional grounding because Pruitt was out of the pocket. It's fourth down, the final chance for Valdosta State. Under a minute, Channing Price doing some dancing down on the sideline. Unfortunately, his season is over, even though they do win the peach basket. Zach Parker to the far side. Taylor, Tharp, and Felton to the near side. 
Here's the blitz again. Pruitt hit hard. Pass is intercepted by Larico Stevenson. The seventh turnover with 47.6. And that will officially seal the deal for West Georgia. They will win the peach basket as Tucker Pruitt just heaves this one up, hoping that Parker will come down with it. Unfortunately, it's Larico Stevenson that does. And the Braves. Well, you've got, to, you've got to give it to West Georgia. They came in here and they said, who cares of you being ranked number two in the nation? Who cares about you trying to get a Gulf South Conference championship? Who cares about your South region ranking? This is a rivalry game. It's our final game. We're not going to get into the postseason. And we want to win this game to show to the, to the state that we have as much power as this Valdosta State team does, even with the talent level as an obvious discrepancy as it may be. Neal taken by Genser. As the clock continues to roll, 35 seconds, it's inevitable. The peach basket will be going to Carrollton this season. Albany State up on Fort Valley State by three, which does not bode well for Valdosta State. Well, you said it has to be a blowout win, right? Not necessarily. And some pushing and shoving Carlos Russell. There's a flag. It's not going to matter. The game is over. Well, the clock stops with 8.6. This one's starting to get a little bit nasty. The Blazers ending the season with a bad taste in the mouth. Ending their regular season. Because it is it is a guarantee that we the Blazers will be advancing to the Division II National Playoffs. The seeding is yet to be determined. And now, Bryce, the University of Central Arkansas Bears can now celebrate. They are the 2005 Gulf South Conference champion all alone. Hate to say it, but it's time to face the facts. Personal foul on Carlos Russell. Ball will be moved up to the 46, where Yenser will take a knee and end this rivalry game. Price and all truth, it really wasn't much of a game here today until the fourth quarter, and even then. West Georgia has earned the peach basket, Bryce. The clock starts. And the game ends. West Georgia has won the Peach Basket. They've come to Valdosta and defeated the number two ranked Blazers and taken away their shot for a co Gulf South Conference championship. Well, for Neil Folger, I'm Bryce Zimmerman. You hate to see it end in this manner, but VSU still going to the playoffs. And that's it for us here at VSU TV. It's been a great season. We'll see you next year.